Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode number 57. Now this episode is the amazing Chris Bartlett. Now Chris I refer to as the real life 3PO, and you will find out exactly why in this episode. Um, He is the go-to 3PO performer um, for Lucasfilm. If there's any kind of event where 3PO is there, it's Chris. It's Chris. uh, Chris is in those innards. Um, And he is great. Uh, Wait until you hear uh, his 3PO voice because it's all over this episode. And then you hear me uh, laugh like a child because I just can't handle how amazing it is. Um, But we talk about him building his first 3PO kit. We talk about how he uh, came to work for Lucasfilm, meeting Anthony Daniels for the first time. Like, guys, Chris has some of the greatest stories ever. He met the Obamas. He was in the White House as 3PO. And side note, he also does an amazing Obama impression. But then we talk about um, how he met Dave Chappelle and Lady Gaga at the Oscars. Um, he, Dude, he works in video games right now, right? Okay. And he has the greatest job interview story I've ever heard, ever. It Talk about going and getting uh, a job that's yours. It, I'm going to be telling people this story forever. Uh, but Chris is great. We gush about D. Not going to lie. D, if you're listening, you know you're amazing. Uh, but <laughs> details is uh, fantastic. Fantastic and solo as well. Um, but Chris, just one of the most genuine guys I've had on. It was such a pleasure talking to him and to see a little bit behind the magic um, of what he does. And he is a diehard 3PO fan, and it's so cool that somebody like him is now uh, one of the stewards, if you will, of this character. And uh, I'm going to leave it at that. You guys are not ready for some of the best stories I've ever heard. Um, So without further ado, here is The Interesting Podcast, episode number 57 with Chris Bartlett. Theme song time. Well, it's less scary than going up, going up for collecting, uh, you know, uh, yes. strangers' houses as a as a twelve year old. Tell it, me it's about a little it. Scary. Tell me about it. <laughs> My first job, I was yeah. fourteen, and I actually sold uh, home subscriptions door to door, like a couple nights a oh, week. Oh, the worst. Yeah. I know. Oh no. I was the guy door who to helped door you. Sales. I was no. the guy who helped your route. <laughs> I see. Okay. <laughs> that was the worst. The absolute oh, worst. That's got. That's yeah. That's got it. Door to door sales has got to be the worst. Terrible. Job. Terrible. That was my first <laughs> job. Yeah. You would not believe the yeah. excuses people would give to not want to sign up. <laughs> we had. Oh. Dude, we had one woman that like she told us that uh, she was struck by lightning and now she can't read, and we're like, oh. Oh. Well. Oh, wow. Um, you could use that for anything. I know. I was like, I was struck wow. by lightning. I can't. I, Sorry. I can't. Uh, I can't give exactly <laughs> ability to read. It's just gone. Was, You're like, well, I, I, yeah. I can't argue with that. Wow. <laughs> I was struck by lightning. I can't answer or respond to any emails. Exactly. Because exactly. my sensitivity to electronic uh, gone. It's signals. shot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's insane. Wow. I know. Coincidentally, yeah. I had a I had an episode one shirt one time, and it had, like, Darth Maul on the top and then uh, the rest yeah. of the characters on the bottom. And I remember yeah. one woman actually told me – she got, like, really mad. And she was like, if you're going oh. to try and sell things door to door, you shouldn't have the devil on your shirt. And I was like uh, – I, I was just like, what? Say that. <laughs> the devil? Yeah. This is no devil. Exactly. I was like, do you, you not know – Totally different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, if wow. you have no context and you're looking at Darth Maul, you're like, oh, you know what? This this <laughs> one's on me. This one's on me. <laughs> you know, I I have uh, also at a door uh, had a case of mistaken identity or mistaken Star Wars characters. Oh, really? I was in 1970. Let's see. Star Wars came out in 77 mm-hmm. in May. 
and I was seven, and in that Halloween, uh, my parents and I made a Luke Skywalker costume. So it was Sweet. a tinfoil belt buckle, um, a, you know, like a karate type shirt, mm-hmm. and, you know, khaki pants, and, and like, you know, I think it was like nylons wrapped around my legs, nothing around my boots. And uh, I had an inflatable yellow lightsaber, and I went to the door, and this old lady answered the door, and um, I said, trick or treat, and she goes, oh, you must be Darth Vader. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I know this is new, but I couldn't be further from Darth Vader. <laughs> like, Come on, you're not even trying, lady. <laughs> no, no. Anyway. Uh, it doesn't yeah. end. It doesn't end. <laughs> no, no, and 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 I have been called R two many, many times. R2 of course, times. every Jedi is yeah. uh, Obi Wan. It's just the way. To yeah, go. yeah. <laughs> Tie pilots <laughs> yeah. are also Darth Vader. It's it, uh, it, that's right. The plight. You of know, the I legions. feel bad for Tie pilots. Me too. Especially at five hundred first events. You know, Tie pilots don't get any respect. Nobody knows who they are. They, I mean, everyone expects. You know, I mean, every kind of normal person and by normal person i mean a person who doesn't you know doesn't wear costumes or doesn't you know watch star wars the films plebs. multiple times a year yes right right <laughs> um you know i've i've seen many uh many type pilots at, at events be called darth vader and i just i'm like oh buddy right you just come here <laughs> come here it's okay right i know what you come want here. Yeah. <laughs> right I've seen like yeah. a, a couple Legion people that have patches that are Tie pilots, and uh-huh. it just says not Darth Vader. I was like, fair, fair. <laughs> oh, of course, <laughs> six. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you're in. Uh, I'm in. Florida. You're in Florida. You said. Yep. Yeah. I'm okay. In... Did you ever go to uh, Star Wars weekend? Oh, so yes and no. <laughs> I had not been, and then I made it to the last one. And, oh uh, yes, it, it was in like, 2015. In 2015, I I, w- I went to yes. the first because it's five weekends. I went to the first yes. weekend and the last weekend, and I went to troop okay. there because I was in the Rebel Legion and Five O First at the time. What I oh no kidding yes. What I didn't know was that you cannot uh, go back to your car for something after the dogs have already come and uh, sniffed the costumes. And I accidentally left my boots in the car. So I oh, didn't no. get to march the first time, and I was so bummed out. But being, uh, that, oh, being no. that that was my first time ever going, I got to watch the parade. And it was like a, oh, cool. it was like a half win because I got to see it for the yes. first time. But I was supposed to be in it. So it was like this weird sort of relationship thing. But I right. luckily yes. had a spot the last weekend, and I knew ahead of time, so, so the, I got to march. So the last weekend... Yep. Of the last Star Wars weekend, you I marched made it. it. That's awesome. Right at the end. That's awesome. Just right. In, it counts. <laughs> right under the buzzer. That's yes, right. Yes, it does. Oh, that's so cool. And how was that? Oh, it was amazing. Amazing. Yeah. There's nothing like it. Yeah. So you're right, right. So you've never been in a character in a Disney park before. Correct. Right. Oh, how how fun. It really is a. Well, did you get to meet the droids? I did. I did. It was awesome. What? I did. The whole the so, whole experience of Star Wars Weekends is like, it's something yeah. else. Yes. It's so good. It is. Wait, are you about to tell it's me magical. you were one of them? Now, yeah, so we've Chris. met before. What? Dude. Yeah, so, uh, so, so if you met C-3PO, then you and I have met before. That is amazing. Um, so so that how that... Uh, how that happened? And so, what what uh, weekend did you go? Then was it the last weekend or the, yes. the first weekend? Mm-hmm. Okay. I was at both of those, but the both. last okay. weekend was the one where uh, I like marched and like had the full experience. Okay, and then which one did you meet the droids? That would have been the last one. Awesome, amazing. Okay, um, so uh, the, the way that started is at the time I had. Um, uh, been cast in the role uh, as C-3PO for, um, th- that was my ninth year at, at Lucasfilm. Nice. And, um, but, uh, sorry, I'm sorry, uh, 2006, 2010, so 
2010 was the first year at Disney, and so that would have been, I'd only been doing it four years. And um, uh, Disney had contacted, Disney Parks had contacted Lucasfilm and said, um, you know, we um, heard that there is, uh, C-3PO is more available now than before. Yeah. Um, and and uh, and so they okayed um, for C-3PO to be uh, to go into the park and uh, to appear as a character. And you know they they used to have a park C-3PO in the '90s, in the late '90s, like '97. Really. And. Yeah, and it was if you if yeah if you look at if you do a Google search for like MGM Studios Mm -hmm. Star Wars uh, or maybe C three PO, you'll see what looks like a cousin of C three (laughs) PO. He's 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 bigger. um, His head is uh, different shaped. Mm -hmm. Um, It's uh, wider and. the eyes didn't light up, um, but uh, anyways, uh, uh, and the and the wires were not as uh, you know detailed. Sure. Uh, but but anyway, um, that so from the nineties till two thousand ninety seven till two thousand ten, there were no there was no C three PO in the park, and so um, I was uh, cast and uh, was Brian. It was a dream come true because I grew up going to Disney every summer. Yeah. And uh, and um, to be uh, performing with these char- with these actors and performers who are are trained uh, professional or or some of them just learned you know while working at Disney but oh, they've yeah. been doing it um, at least as long as I had and and some of them much longer and uh, so but when I got there. Um, they they gave me a sheet, it was a character sheet, and said, um, "This is typically what we give to performers to um, uh, to inform them what they should, how they should this character acts, how he stands, how he walks, and what kinds of things he would say or or know about." Wow! And um, and they gave this to me, but they said, "But Lucasfilm." said that you already know all this stuff and <laughs> that we should just let you do what you do. And I was yeah. like, what? Okay, <laughs> that's awesome. So um, I had built the suit also to um, have a voice amp and a very clear speaker and, and, and a clear microphone. So mm-hmm. you can hear uh, me talk across the street. And Sweet. it's very clear. And I was doing the impression um, as C-3PO. And, um, uh, and that made C-3PO at that time the only masked character that was allowed to talk in the parks. What? Uh, only just just because I uh, talked. And so um, I uh, would interact with, with people live, so all the, all the interactions were real and personal. And so I don't know if you um, uh, remember uh, the interaction, but um, uh, it, it was it, the – Interacting with the with the guests in the park is just the most fun. It is, and I still do it. Like we just, I just did some work for Disneyland. Now that we're on the West Coast, uh-huh. um, I do a lot of a lot of stuff with Disney parks um, and uh, with the character. And it's just it's just so much fun. You get to see the park at night after it's closed. You get to see um, people. Uh, get so excited that they start crying because they're meeting characters that they grew up with. And oh, now, yeah. you know, people would say, I've been waiting my whole life to meet you. You know, of course, they're not saying that to me. They're saying that to R2 and 3PO. Sure, but sure. they're saying, I've Still waited counts. my whole, <laughs> yeah, my whole life to meet you. I grew up, you know, playing, you know, and imagining about you. And now I, and now I'm meeting you. I just, I can't believe it. You know, it's just th- that, that part, you know, people ask, are you claustrophobic in the helmet? Uh, I'm not. Because when you look through the tiny black holes in mm-hmm. the eyes and see people and this is their reaction that is this giant smile or laughing or tears or, you know, it's, it's the most awesome feeling. Oh, of course, of course. You can't not. Well, yeah. That's the whole reason I joined yeah. the 501st originally was because I remember yes, that yes. first time I ever saw a clone trooper 
and it just you, okay. you're six years old again, and you're like, oh my god, it's real. Yeah. I knew it was real, but now it's I'm real. seeing that yeah. it's real. <laughs> seeing it, right? It's right. Pure and magic. I, I did get my my start. That's right. I did get my start with in the five hundred first as far as. Uh, uh, you know, I, I had gotten a, a stormtrooper costume back in two, nineteen or sorry two thousand, nice. and I built it. Um, I would gotten it because there was um, I'm sorry, this is all over the place. Um, there, I saw this guy had a website, and and he was selling high end Star Wars helmets. Oh, sweet! And he also was was selling uh, stormtrooper kits. And by back then, it was a kit called the Armor Effects kit. It was kind of like oversized helmet. Mm-hmm. Uh, armor was a little bit oversized, but still, it looked. It, but then it was. It might as well have been right off of the movie, right out of the movie. And so I saw that he offered those, and I said, "Hey, I and I'm I, my uh, at the time I was uh, designing and building websites. I said I will redesign your website because I, I wrote him. I told him your website is really." Uh, really does not in the <laughs> nicest way possible i said does not reflect uh the epic nature of what you're selling you yeah. should really I, I and i said i would like to make you a proposal i would like to build you a design and build you a website in exchange for uh don uh, it was it was the uh, the like premium don post oh, uh yeah. darth vader helmet mm-hmm. and a stormtrooper a set of stormtrooper armor, Smart. and he goes done. I will do it. So, Smart. so that was my start. And then, and then, and then I just started wearing it. I started looking for events to wear it at, like, um, like an astronomy show or you know some kind of book thing or yeah. anything. I was just, and then I found out about the five hundred first. And so there was like three other guys in Central California. This is in two thousand. Mm-hmm. And so together uh, with them, the four of us started the Central California Garrison of the 501st. What? Yeah. And, uh, and so we, we, I got, I got us, uh, um, a couple of events and then we started, you know, then, and then I was like, oh, this is a real thing. Like this is a real club. And I found out it was <laughs> all over the place. And, uh, and so I just, uh, would I would always stay in character and uh, you know wherever I went and because that's I didn't want to see you know people don't want to see people dressed up as characters walking around they want to see the characters walking around for sure and that that was um, and not not everybody feels like that you know in in the five first some just want to have fun and that's cool too it's just, just a club um, but when I would troop that that was really important to me so I you know I had the voice amp and I would I would do the voice and. Uh, yeah, of the troopers and then i and then later um you know uh, a couple of years later i built a, a screen accurate boba fett costume and then nice. i would do the same thing as boba fett and did the voice and did the um wherever you go you know staying in character um and uh so that was always important to me to to present a character sure. as accurate as possible to the film and if even if the costume isn't a hundred percent accurate. If the portrayal of it, of the character is, is believable, um, then, then people's, uh, suspension of disbelief, um, you can, there, you can actually, uh, convince people through your performance that, um, that it is the real thing. Even 100%. if there are, like I said, details or something that aren't, aren't a hundred percent on there. Um, and that, that's the magic part, the magic part where their imagination and, uh, from when they were little comes up to the forefront of, of their memory and of this experience and it changes what's happening. Um, and that's a, such a magic moment. I, I love being part of that. Oh yeah, for sure. I, I, I've been, yeah. uh, I've been taking these new like puppetry classes now cause Mike Quinn, oh, yeah. uh, he opened a school of puppetry. Oh yes. Dude, it's amazing. Can't oh, re- did he? Oh, that's awesome. Cannot wow. recommend it enough. But I got I got this Muppet, and I think Muppets are, like, magic personified because you look yes. at the Muppet, and you know that it's just somebody's hand inside of, a like, sock. a felt. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But then, right. like, when you're looking yeah. at it, you're not – the person isn't a ventriloquist either, so they're just talking regularly, but you're looking at the Muppet, yeah. and you're like, what is this? Yeah. Same sort of principle. Right. If you commit, yes, exactly. You know, you're not thinking about right. anything else. You're like, oh my god, it's three PO. 
So now, cool. right. Now, I do believe that there's a part of nostalgia that also works towards oh, yeah. this uh, magic formula. Because okay. as a kid, you saw Sesame Street or you saw The Muppet Show, mm -hmm. and you saw them without a person. You know, you just saw The Muppet. Right. You didn't see a person's hand or you didn't see the person standing to the side or whatever. Um, and uh, so y your mind does remember uh, those good feelings and that, that kind of magic um, of seeing that character. And so when you see them, your mind wants to erase everything else but the character. Yeah, you just tunnel vision. And that's it's kind Gonzo. Of, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And that, that's kind of that, – it's the exact same principle, um, that if your performance is – uh, good enough to uh, erase any disbelief um, you've made a really magic moment um, I agree. so yeah well that's cool that's yeah. cool and yeah. do you do you get to build build uh, puppets in this class uh, I'm assuming you'll get there they start you off learning mm -hmm. how to build like the training eyes it's like an elastic band oh sure with yes the uh, like yeah. basically ping pong balls on the top with felt pupils. yes yep so right, that, right, right, right. Oh, that is so fun. Techniques. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Cool, cool. Yeah, cool. but speaking of building, you, well, you said you built your 3PO. Yeah. How out of what? Yes. Talk to me. Okay. Um, so after I'd built Stormtrooper, I built a Tuscan Raider, I built uh, Boba Fett, and trooped in all those and got some practice at, like, being a being character. Mm -hmm. um, then, then I would build a bunch of stuff for my kids. So we would... We'd build Jawas for them, or uh, Ula, the green dancer, yeah. Jawas dancer, or like a gonk droid, or um, so awesome, or Ara Singh, or uh, Zam Wessel. We built all those costumes for, for the kids, and we, you know, would um, wear those together. And uh, so then, um, I had never seen anyone do a um, another, or I'd never seen anyone do. All oh, right, take it back. I had always wanted to do C-3PO, but it seemed like such an unattainable costume because oh, yeah. nobody was making that. It wasn't like available like the Stormtrooper kits were. Um, and so, uh, you know, I was collecting parts that I thought that maybe we could turn into something, you know, and then I was researching the uh, all the reference and all the really pouring over tons and tons and tons of archive photos and uh you know capturing screen captures of of him and looking oh, yes. at all the differences between between all the movies and all that stuff um and then i saw um this is this is my the first inspiration that i thought okay this could possibly be done and it was um a guy in japan his name was akira and he's in the 501st garrison there and what they had done is taken um well, they had taken a Don Post statue or a copy of a Don Post statue and then cast that. Oh. And then they uh, kind of made their own, put their own together. Um, and uh, he, he went to Celebration 3, mm -hmm. Star Wars Celebration 3, in I don't know what year that would have been, but it was right after Attack of the Clones. So he painted it like Attack of the Clones, like, you know, the, right. the 3PO that is silver and rusty and brown and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, the beat up one. Um, yeah. So when I saw him walking around, I was like, this is the first time I've ever seen this. Um, I, you know, and there were some, like, he couldn't talk. Um, sure. He was, uh, I think he, um, he, he's about 5'4", so, um, uh, you know, but in pictures, it's, uh, you know, it looked, it looked right on. Like, yeah. like, and the paint job was fantastic. Um, you know, it looked just like Attack of the Clones, okay. And... Uh, so I said, okay, I said, okay, it, I, so this can be done. I'm going to do it. And we wrote back and forth for a little while. Um, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't producing parts or anything. So it was mostly just a, an appreciation for his work. Yeah. Um, so in the meantime, then I, um, uh, was able to get, um, some, I would just over the years collect parts that were copies of copies of screen use parts, you know, where I would, I would get like a head here or I would get, a uh, um, uh, a leg here mm -hmm. or, uh, I, I got a chest one time, you know, and then I was able to, to, um, uh, I found a collector who had, had gotten copies of a, 
an an uh, Empire Strikes Back suit. Ooh. And the way that he got this was back when Disney was first doing um, uh, Star Tours, the first Star Tours. Right. Uh, they and and building uh, they needed to build C three PO for their animatronic um, part of the ride. Um, they had gotten um, parts that they could cast because George was working. George Lucas was working directly with them at that point, right. and so they they got uh, copies. Well, the guys in the prop shop made copies, and and then many many years later, some of these pieces uh, were in collectors' hands. Uh-huh. I don't know how that happened, but it <laughs> some <did>. way. <laughs> yes. Um, so anyway, I've talked. I'm not. I'm not going to share the the. The guy's name, but um, I talked to him. He confirmed that this was the case, and cool. um, and uh, he he uh, used to work at Disney uh, back during that time. So um, uh, so this is I just over the years had collected uh, some uh, parts like that, and then um, uh, but oh. the parts themselves were really rough. Okay. Uh, they're soft on details, um, mm-hmm. and uh, they were they didn't have all the details. Uh, some of them were too big, um, and some of them were um, fused. You know, like the arms uh, I had um, were were part of a statue, so it was from like the shoulder to the fingertips, and it was all one piece, so it wasn't gotcha. wearable and it was solid inside. Okay, so so I have a friend, uh, and he's been. Uh, uh, a friend and a partner for uh, since um, 2003. Wow! And his name is Martin Calienta, and uh, he is an architect um, and a Star Wars fan. But he didn't yes. know anything about the C-3PO costume. Mm-hmm. I had done um, years of research on this uh, character and on the functionality of the suit and. Um, and had done 3D, uh, 3D models of how uh, the knees should function and how the elbows should function and how the, the uh, pistons should work. Sure. Um, and, and then to become friends with Don Bees. And he, Don is um, the man who worked at Lucasfilm. He was the former um, director of the Lucasfilm archives and then uh, worked on the prequels. Um, as the droid uh, specialist, he built oh, um, the built the droids and also operated them, and also dressed Anthony Daniels and was very familiar. He maintained all the all the the protocol droid suits and and all the R two R five units right and, um, in the prequels. So, um, and and R two builders know Don very well. He's very they have a great relationship. So. so cool. um, yeah, so I con so I contacted Don and said, "Hey, I just have a couple of questions." Um, and he was so generous with uh, helping me understand, like the suspension system in the legs, how so the legs stay together, um, mm-hmm. how the arms functioned, and uh, uh, that that was that was really um, the most helpful part sure. of the mystery of the C three PO costume because there are things that are happening inside that just looking at it, you wouldn't be able to know. Right. So I took that, I took all the research I had done and the, and the things I had created for it. And I went to Martin and I said, um, he, he's an architect who also does rapid prototyping in, for, in fiberglass. Oh, wow. And so I said, this is a part. Um, and, uh, the, and we talked about all the, all the parts mm-hmm. and, um, we just did one, uh, part at a time. You know, I was doing my regular job, and then uh, at night, late at night, and on the weekends, uh, we would work on on this. And so it took three years. Of oh, course, nice. it would never take. It should never take that long if I was doing this professionally. Obviously, it would yeah, just take course. you know uh, weeks instead of um, years. Mm-hmm. But anyway, um, it was also an expensive process. So oh, yes. uh, in in doing all of these concepts, to try and get them functional. You know, you have. Um, you make you fail along the way until you figure it out and and okay that one really works but you know you're 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 um, sculpting and then casting and testing mm-hmm. uh, and then have to resize something or whatever and get the details right so 
anyway, uh, Martin is such a great um, partner in that way. Uh, and so um, so we would do one part at a time. We do we'd work it all the way through and get it uh, functional and then um, and then I would test fit it on myself because I was making it for me. Right? right. We were making it to fit me, but I didn't know if it would fit me until we got one piece done, you right. know, and then I could try it on. By then we'd already spent, you know, hundreds of dollars to try yeah. and get it, you know, and so it better fit, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, or I'd be really disappointed. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, we, we spent uh, um, three years doing that and, uh, and ultimately, we had to re-sculpt and uh, recreate uh, the functionality of the knees and the elbows, as well as, uh, let's see, well, those functionally, oh, and then also the head, because the one that I had, um, you, it wouldn't fit to put it on because it was it was thick in the face, so your nose would be smashed mm -hmm. in there, and it wasn't. So we had to um, make it bigger to be able to wear it, to, so my nose would fit in and stuff. Right. And uh, it's already a small oh, head yeah. anyway. But um, so that's um, then we had to figure out the lights. Like, how do the lights work? I mean, it's hard to yeah, tell you're right. just by um, looking at it. Then how, how do you See, and so I just had to figure it out. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, how does how do the lights? How does it have light but not blind you while you're looking? You know, through that. How does that? Yeah. How do you do that? And so there were a couple of photos behind the scenes where I could kind of get an idea of what it was, uh, how it worked, and we figured that out. And ultimately, uh, Anthony Daniels sees through the little black holes in the eyes, and those are those are tubes like. Uh, as thick as a pencil. Oh. So okay. you're looking, you're looking out tubes, which really is, and the only ventilation you have is out of out of the mouth. There's no other holes or anything in the oh boy. in the costume. So um, it's pretty tight in there. But and so when I first put it on, I was like, okay, as long as I can see out, I'm okay. Right. Um, and and then when I'd I'd see people's reaction, and I just I was like, oh okay, this is fine. I can do this. Easy. Right, right. Um, yeah. Their energy so, keeps. Anyway, going. that was that was we. Oh yeah. So then we we got it. Uh, okay. Now Brian, when you're building something like this, the whole dream, the whole I mean, the dream way way in the back of your mind is, man, it would be great. It wouldn't be. It would be awesome if if this could be used in something. You know, if 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 what if like. Lucasfilm thought that it was, uh, oh, they yes. thought, and they and they and they said, "Hey, good job! That was really cool." Mm -hmm. Or what if they were ultimately like, you know, that this could be, "Hey, we we feel this is worthy to be used in a show or whatever," you know. Absolutely. But of course, that would never happen because all I'm doing is making a costume in my garage. Right. Or you know? so you thought. And yes, right, right. <laughs> uh, but that was always a dream. Uh, people ask, you know. Uh, with what you've done with this character, have you did you ever imagine or uh, that this would be what you would be doing? And yes, that's what I imagined. I didn't ever yeah. think that it would happen, but I did imagine that that's what I would wanted to do with it for sure. So when I when I finally we finally finished it three years later, and I got all of the parts together, um, and I didn't have it chromed or anything. It was just I just spray painted it gold and weathered it to look like you know it was dirty and stuff to mask the fact that it was not shiny. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, and then my first time I ever wore it to an event was at the Boston uh, Museum of Science. Nice. And it was the opening of Star Wars. Um, what was the name of the exhibit? Star Wars where imagination, wait, where science meets imagination. Cool. And in on that opening weekend, Anthony Daniels was going to be there. What? And so, uh, yeah. So I was like, "Oh, this will be great. I, I can I can wear it, and um, uh, and and Anthony Daniels will be there. Maybe I'll get a picture with him or something, you know. But maybe he's probably going to be too busy, and whatever. And mm -hmm. probably the five or first people are, you know, they will will be sequestered somewhere away from him or something. Sure. Anyway, that was not the case. So when when I got there. 
I, um, I put it on and I had my friend um, Chris Sanders who uh, ended up who became my best friend uh, and we, we continue to be best friends this is uh, this is um, uh, since 2004 um, and 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 that relationship grew into he is my and he and I together have been counterparts as R2 and 3PO for Disney Parks, Lucasfilm, and on TV commercials, TV appearances, and to, uh, all, all over. So, But anyway, it all started because he was the one who helped me put on the costume. That's so cool. And so, yeah, and, and so when he, when he, uh, uh, he wanted to build an R2 to go along with my C-3PO. Sure. And so anyway, he helped me suit up um, at the Boston. We, we flew up to Boston. Um, to be there for this event, and uh, I um, took, a, I had him take a video of me walking, and while I was walking, there this older couple walked by, and I just said, oh, hello, and, uh, <laughs> and that was the video, that was it, it was just me taking like six steps and saying uh, hello, and then I, um, and then I took pictures, you know, front and back, so when we got done with the event, um, Years before, I had met one guy, Chris Vitale, who worked at Lucasfilm, mm-hmm. and he, uh, I had, he had given me his email. He said, hey, you know, um, uh, let's keep in touch for whatever reason. And so I sent him a picture and a video of me in the costume. I said, hey, Chris, I just finished a, my latest costume, you know, um, just wanted to send it to you, you know, since we'd met and nice. stuff. I thought you might like it. So he's like, oh, that's awesome. That was really cool. Um, and so I'll come back to that story. But, but while we were at uh, the Boston Museum of Science, um, we were back there getting changed, and Anthony Daniels comes in Ooh. while we were getting changed. And I was like, Perfect oh, this timing. is amazing. <laughs> this is the first time I'm wearing it. I'm, I hope I don't screw it up. But I said, uh, you know, since before this event, leading up to this event, I had been working on the, the voice. And the way I did that was I would dro- – my commute was – uh, 80 minutes a day, and I would um, play the uh, DVDs in my car, nice. and I would just listen uh, for his voice, and I would just play them over and over and copy and try and copy and copy and copy. Right. And uh, and so I'd done this for two months uh, leading up to this event, and um, so when Anthony Daniels said, uh, "Oh, uh, let's hear the voice," now him saying "Let's hear the voice" is like Elvis saying to an Elvis yeah. impersonator, <laughs> let's hear the voice. You're you know? right. Um, and of, oh of course, my entire body shot with electricity, and I got so nervous. And I said, um, hello, I am teaching here at Human Tiger Conventions. You know, like really, <laughs> and it was so nervous and dumb. And he goes, oh, that's, that's uh, pretty good. He said, a little, a little slower. And I said, uh, okay, I, I can do that. So then he then he signed the inside of my helmet. What? And uh, yeah, and so then he took some pictures with us, and uh, I stood next to him in the costume and with and with the helmet off, and so we got pictures together. That was the first um, of many times working together with Anthony Daniels. What? And uh, it was a dream come true. So back to back to when I sent the picture and the video to Lucasfilm. Yeah. So about three months later, I was, I went to, uh, I, I said, you know what, I, I don't know how I'm going to be able to afford it, but I, I'm going to bite the bullet and get this thing chromed. It, it'll look, it'll look a thousand times better. Mm-hmm. So at the time it was like $1,500. It was, it was really expensive. Sure. Um, and so, but I said, okay, I'm just, I'm just gonna, I, I think something could come of this. I don't know what, you know, but maybe it sounds really impractical and totally dumb, but I'm just going to do it. Mm-hmm. So I sent it out to get chromed. And um, what do you know, but a couple days later, Lucasfilm calls. What? And they and they said, it was Lucas Art um, who contacted oh, nice. me and said, and said, Chris, um, this is in 2006, we uh, would like, we, we understand, we saw the pictures of your suit. Um, and it turns out, um, 
that Steve Sansweet, who uh, at the time was head of fan relations, right, and Mary Franklin, who oh, worked sweet. in events um, at the time, mm-hmm. they had seen the suit, and Steve said to Mary, "You should call this kid." Um, kidding, I'm sorry. I was, I was, I, I was <laughs> in at that point. Um, not to Steve, you, you call this guy. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Right. Right. Uh, and so they said, uh, we would like to, we've seen a picture of your costume and the video of it. And, uh, we would like to, uh, ask if we could rent it. And we, we have an event we would like, um, we have, we would like to borrow the uh, suit and have one of uh, someone here at Lucasfilm wear it. Uh, for our event mm, tough uh, spot and i was like yeah one this dream is coming true right they, lucasfilm thought it looked so good that they want to use it correct <laughs> uh two problems two but... problems one it's not even here it's at the chrome shop all the way across the country <laughs> and it's getting chromed great <laughs> i'm an idiot why did i do this why did i wait so long to do this the other problem is they wanted someone else to wear it Yep. And so I said, uh, one, in my mind, I was like, why do you need this one? This is a crappy fan-made costume. You, <laughs> you don't, what, don't you have 27 of these? Why would you need mine? Yeah. And, um, and they said, well, we have four of them, and they're all um, on display in traveling exhibits. And, you know, at the time, there were no Star Wars movies being made. It, this is in 2006. Right. Um, I'm sorry. The, um, that's false. Uh, 2006, uh, 2005 was Revenge of the Sith, so mm-hmm. they were all done making uh, the, the the prequels, so uh, there weren't any more Star Wars movies being made, that's true. Right. Uh, but what they had was on exhibit. So uh, they said, I said, okay, well, the um, one thing is that it, it, I don't have it here right now. I totally felt like... <laughs> You're like, like oh, God. Uh, like... <laughs> Uh, yeah, exactly. I was like, uh, I really do have it, I promise. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> That's but, really uh, me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, what, what the crazy thing happened uh, yeah. <laughs> that it is at the Chrome shop. Yeah. And they were like, oh, it's it's being Chrome. That's even better. Oh. And I said, yeah, but they said it's it's not going to be ready for like five weeks. And they said, oh, um, uh. give us the number. And uh, I gave them the number. They put me on a conference call and they said, Hi, uh, this is Lucasfilm. This is so and so at Lucasfilm. Uh, we, you, you have the C three PO costume. <laughs> you have our chroming. droid. <laughs> yeah, right. They didn't say uh, you have, you know, this fan built. Co-. They said you have, you have the C three PO costume there that you're chroming. And they were like, oh yeah. They said we need it this week instead of five weeks from now. And they were like, oh, no problem. And I was oh. like, oh, boom, that's great. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Lucasfilm said, and uh, don't worry about the cost wow i was like okay and that was and 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 i told him now the other thing is i had the costume um fit uh, fit custom sculpted and and we we made it to fit me Mm -hmm. and uh so i don't really know how many other people it would be able to fit and they're like oh okay but you can wear it and i said yeah and they said you've worn it before and i said yes (laughs) and they said oh okay well uh, we'll just use you then. And I was like, oh, man, I'm so glad I said something. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, and, uh, and so then, then uh, they said, okay, what, here's what we're going to do. We're going to, um, when, it's, uh, when the costume is done being chromed, we will ship it up to us at Lucasfilm in San Francisco. Uh, we will not open it or unpack it. We're going to fly you out to Lucasfilm. Uh, we'll have a driver for you and everything. And, uh, and, and the thing is also, Brian, is it what I had to disassemble the whole thing to get it chromed. Right. Sure. So, um, they said, uh, they said, how long, how long do you need to reassemble it? I said, uh, like maybe two or three hours. And they're like, okay, no problem. Mm -hmm. Um, we're going to fly you to Lucasfilm. You can finish assembling it. And then, uh, we're going to Australia to make an appearance for the media, um, and you'll do that at C-3PO. And I was like, oh, <laughs> this is, again, this is a dream. This dream is coming true. First, yeah. it was the, I just thought I was going to stop at the museum. But anyway, so they, uh, they flew me out there and they picked me up at the airport. 
and uh, they drove me to Lucasfilm at the Presidio, which um, I'd been there once before as a 501st member at this like party. We were like directing traffic to stormtroopers, mm -hmm. and um, but anyway, um, so we they they flew me there. They introduced me around, and they they brought me into this room, this conference room, and said, "Here are the boxes with the costume parts in it. Uh, we haven't opened them. Um, you have four hours." To put it together, Ooh. and then uh, and then tonight we'll be getting on uh, the flight to um, Sydney, Australia. Wow! Like, oh, that's amazing. Game time. Um, so yeah, so they they took me in this room. They said, "Okay, uh, do you need anything else?" I, just, I I said I brought my tools and everything, so I should be fine. And uh, they said, "Okay," and then they closed the door. And so now I'm sitting at Lucasfilm building the C-3PO costume that I had, <laughs> that I had been do, imagining and dreaming that, that one day I'd be able to finish, and uh, I'd never dreamt that I would finish building it at Lucasfilm. Right. I did dream that. I just never thought that it would actually happen. So um, that was, again, another total dream come true. Yeah. And uh, I was so grateful. I can't, I just, I, I was just so grateful that I was uh, in that position and that, that I was prepared for that opportunity, but so many things had to happen for that to um, to happen. And one of those things was uh, my partnership with Martin Calienta, and then also with Chris Sanders, who had helped me um, uh, with the um, sound and also the lights for the eyes. Right. Um, and also to help dress me. But um, he couldn't. He couldn't fly to Australia. Um, and so I had to have someone there at Lucasfilm uh, dress me up, dress me. Dude. So, so then we went. And so that was the first official appearance. That was uh, six months after I had finished the costume. Wow. And, and so I've been um, appearing uh, as C-3PO for Lucasfilm and Disney um, ever since. And this is my, I'm about to have my 12th anniversary. Um, and, uh, but Brian, this was, uh, nothing compared to what happened next. Oh. Um, <laughs> so, um, so then there were, th there were, I'm going to shorten this, this a little bit, but there were things like, uh, McDonald's commercials and, um, and other TV appearances. Um, one of which was, oh. So Chris Sanders, I mentioned him. When he, when uh, Lucasfilm, I don't think I've ever told Lucasfilm this, so if they hear this, this will be <laughs> funny. Um, when uh, Lucasfilm contacted me and said, we have a um, McDonald's commercial that uh, C-3PO and R2-D2 are in, and uh, we're ca we've cast you for that. And I said, oh, my gosh, I'm going to be in a commercial. This is amazing. Yeah. Um, and and then uh, they said, do you know anyone who has a, a functioning R2-D2? Now, remember, Chris Sanders, who started to build a C3, I mean, an R2-D2, um, because he and I were, because uh, we had put the C-3PO costume on, right. and uh, he wanted to build one to go with it. And so he collected all the parts, you know, uh, different places, like, you know, he, he was a member of the R2 builders and, and stuff like that. So he had collected all the parts. And he built like um, he had had a static one. It was like a statue um, where um, it, it didn't function. Right. It just stood there. And uh, but I knew he had all the parts to build a functional one. And he's an electronic uh, engineer. He's a he's an amazing creative genius uh, nice. when it comes to this stuff. Build building this stuff, building robots and and um, the way he engineers them and stuff to be flawless and. Um, functionally uh, reliable. Sure. So, um, so they said, "Do you know anyone who has a, a an R two?" And I was like, "Yes." Uh oh. Let me uh, <laughs> let him know. So I contacted Chris, and I was like, "Chris, uh, you know your R two, your pile of R two in the in the parts <laughs> in the in the corner." And he was like, "Yeah." I said, "You need to put this thing together like this week because Lucasfilm." Uh, needs an R2 for this McDonald's commercial. And he was like, oh, my gosh. I don't – I don't. okay, all right, well, I, I can do it. I know I can do it. So 
um, he uh, he built. Um, oh, this, is, this is a little behind the scenes. This happens all the time in production and film, sure. what I'm about to tell you. And that is uh, Lucasfilm said, okay, can you send me a picture? And I was like, yeah, I of can course. send you a picture of, <laughs> of R2. So I said, hey, Sanders, send me a picture of your statue. And, and uh, that will kind of like let them know what you can visually do mm-hmm. and while you're building the other one. And he was like, okay, so we sent them a picture of static R2. And then they said, okay, this looks good. Um, can you send a video of it moving? Uh-oh. And I was like, <laughs> yes. Yes, I can. <laughs> I didn't know how we were going to do that. But I said, yes, I can. Always so say yes. I, I, I was like, Chris. I, yes. I said, Chris, uh, they want to see it moving and with lights. And he was like, I'm out of town. And I was like, <laughs> okay, no problem. I'll just tell him that. But as soon as you get back to town, you have to – uh, do something. He was like, "Okay, I got. I know what I'll do. I, I know what I'll do." So when he got back into town, he put lights in his in the dome, and uh, a little motor in the dome, so he could make the dome light up and and rock, you know, side to side. Like, Smart. Um, that was it. And so we sent them a video of that. So he's not rolling, but the lights are on, and his head is rolling back and forth. There is and, movement. Um, <laughs> Yes, there's movement, right, yes. So we sent them that, and they're like, oh, okay, looks great. Um, And I was like, okay, we have like uh, two weeks to put this thing together. (laughs) And, and man, he got it done. He built an R2 in like two weeks, um, uh, give or take, I think. And and it appears in a um, McDonald's commercial. so anyway, we we were in this together. It was it was something that appeared uh, in the UK. It was a national uh, commercial for McDonald's in the UK. Um, but they built an entire like bridge of a ship and everything, and uh, they had um, Broadway actors and and TV and film actor who played this old Jedi guy. Um, and uh, anyway. Um, uh, while I was there, uh, we we. We shot it and got it all done, mm-hmm. and so Sanders and I went back to the hotel, and we're like, man, I can't believe we did this. <laughs> <laughs> we got it done, and, uh, and you know, we uh, – I don't I, – uh, anyway, I, I'm just going to say that uh, if you can just be prepared for opportunities, you never know when it's going to – when the opportunities are going to come knocking. For um, sure. And so, so – so, uh, um, and so anyway, and, uh, time after that, um, I got a call again from Lucasfilm and they, they, uh, they said, um, are you available for, um, uh, Halloween in Washington, DC? And I'm like, Oh man, I always spend Halloween with my kids. I'm thinking, you know, um, we build costumes together and we, we go and, and do the, um, you know, trick or treating in our you know custom made costumes and all themed you know Star Wars and stuff, and uh, and and but I knew it must be something special because it was Lucasfilm calling and sure. and uh, I talked to my kids and and I was like you know we do Halloween together every year and uh, uh, Lucasfilm wants to do something and it's in Washington D.C. I don't know what it is and um, and we talked it over and we decided yeah okay this, we do we do Halloween every year at this this should this would be fine so um i uh prepared for a trip to washington dc mm-hmm. and uh the the night we didn't know what it was for they wouldn't tell us what it was for sure. i assume maybe maybe it's like the like smithsonian or something they always have like a halloween party maybe it's that sure um this is 2009 what okay 2009 Ooh. um and and we uh the night before we left, uh, Lucasfilm called and said, it's at the White House, Whoa. but we don't know the president's schedule or anything like that. So, you know, of course they knew everything, but they were telling me, we don't know his schedule. We don't know if he's going to be there or anything like that. President Obama, you know, he, he had been in office one, uh, not even the whole year, it was like yeah. 10 months. And, um, and uh, so, you know, um, that's it. And we're like, okay, cool. We're going to the White House. Uh, this is even better. This is cool. Yeah. And so it turns it. So we got to the White House. We t- were, uh, we did all the, the 
the bomb sniffing dogs all came out and and you know checked out the the tubs and stuff that our costumes were in. Um, Chewbacca was there <laughs> from Lucasfilm. Chewie was there, who we are now super excited to see in Solo um, oh, yeah. this week. And um, so, uh, and then there were two local 501st stormtroopers. And then there was um, an R2-D2 provided by um, Alex Kawa, who, who is a local uh, um, uh, R2 builder. Cool. So uh, we were all super, super excited. Chewie was just like, eh. you yeah, know, he exactly. Was, he, he doesn't get real excited. Exactly. Um, so anyway, we we uh, we uh, they Chewie and I went down to the uh, basement, which was my green room in the in the uh, White House, to change. What? Um, Chewie didn't have much to put on. He doesn't even wear pants, so course, I had no to pants. put on my my stuff. Your yes. pants. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And uh, so I put on the costume. And um, it's all, you know, again, it's all mic'd, and you, well, you heard it with a with a amplifier and a speaker yeah. and everything, so it's very clear when I'm talking and, and stuff. So, uh, me and stu- two stormtroopers and Mary Franklin from Lucasfilm get on uh, the elevator to go up to the top of the uh, the the main floor where we were going to be passing out or greeting military and other local families and kids uh, yeah. at the steps of the White House. For Halloween. So uh, if you've never been in the White House, you know, the White House, back when it was built, it did not have elevators. That right. technology did not exist. Mm-hmm. And so they had to, when they retrofitted the White House with, with um, elevators, they, they made them very small. So if you, let's see, if you reach your arm out, mm-hmm. let's say, let's say, and then add another forearm, that's how wide and square the elevator is. Oh, okay? no. <laughs> very small. Yeah, very small. But that's okay. It was me and two Stormtroopers and Mary. Um, so we get on the elevator. We're riding up to the main floor, but it stops a floor early, and the door's open, and it's President Obama. Oh. This is the first moment <laughs> that we realize the president is even going to be in the city, you know? What? Um, and he's, he's standing right there, and he goes, whoa. <laughs> oh, can I get on with you? <laughs> and we said, uh, and, and Mary says, yes, yes, come on. So, um, so he comes into the elevator and he stands right next to me. Now, uh, you've seen the costume up close. There are there are not pointy things, but things that um, you know would be uncomfortable if you got if 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 C three PO swung his elbow out, you know, yeah, jab, you, you know, could, could jab prodded. you in the ribs or something. <laughs> yes, yeah, right. So I was very very careful. I stayed very careful. Anyway, he said he stood next to me. And in the corner there, and he goes, um, uh, let's see, he said, yeah, so he, he, he said, uh, uh, right, when the door's open, he said, uh, can I get on with you? And then he goes, you guys look awesome. And, um, <laughs> and he goes, uh, and, and he, he, is a, he is a genuine Star Wars fan, and I know this because people who are mildly no Star Wars or maybe have seen a couple of the movies, Mm-hmm. rarely get the name C-3PO right. Right. They say like, oh, 3CPO or, mm-hmm. oh, CP3O. That's a, that's a common one. Um, but he said, C-3PO, can I stand next to you? <laughs> and, <laughs> so uh, cool. and so he, so I knew he was, I knew he was a Star Wars fan. So he's standing next to me. And then uh, we, we ride up to our level where we're, we're going to get out. Mm-hmm. And as we're leaving, I turned to Mary and said, why he seemed very friendly (laughs) (laughs) and you know very similar to when uh c-3po met uh, lando calrissian for the first time yeah who again we are excited to see this week um in solo that's right so um so anyway uh she and i started i mean she started laughing because she got the joke um you know because he's the you know administrator of this facility right literally um and uh so um so we went up and we started. We passed out candy with uh, with uh, uh, President and with the Obama, president. and then <laughs> yeah, and then uh, the uh, two uh, people, two men in suits, came up to me after a while, uh, came up to C three PO, and said, uh, "We need you to come with us." 
and I was like, oh, oh boy. did I this is do it. something wrong? I was like, <laughs> I look at R2, uh, you know, but like I, you know, I did, I, I, it must be some special kind of mission, a That's... diplomatic mission. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so, um, so they said, come with us. We went around the side of the, uh, to this the special area, um, where, um, Sasha and Malia were having a private little party with their friends, other Ooh, little girls. And at the time nice. they were 2009, they were probably like 11 and nine, maybe. Yeah, I'm not sure. Exactly. They were really young. Yeah. And, um, and they, and they said, um, uh, when when we came over there, I just greeted them. I said, oh, my goodness, why, hello. I am c 3 po human cyborg relations, and uh, this is my counterpart, R2-D2. And, oh, and they said, perfect. oh, c 3 you, you and R2-D2, you are my favorite droids. Oh. <laughs> and I, I couldn't, I didn't know which one, which one who, uh, which one said it, but it was, uh, um, I think it was the older um, Obama daughter. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so anyway, their favorite characters, uh, they told us later that were R2 and C-3PO. And it turned out that Michelle was the one who had contacted Lucasfilm and said, um, we would like to have, uh, Star Wars characters at the White House for, um, this Halloween event. Um, and Lucasfilm said, uh, who would you like to have? And they, and whoever was calling for Michelle, if it wasn't Michelle, Mm -hmm. uh, said, uh, is, do you have C-3PO and R2-D2? Oh, nice. And they said, yes. It just so happened that they did. Uh, also, they wanted to see Chewbacca. And, um, Fair. So um, that was, oh, wait. Okay, so then that we went back around, and then there was a, they moved us in the house for a White House staff party. And so different members of the White House staff had dressed up in costumes, you know, like um, that you would buy at the store and mm -hmm. – and uh, so we greeted uh, all of them, R2 and 3PO. I mean, yeah, uh, we greeted the White House staff as, as a, kind of like a reception line. Um, and Johnny Depp was there as well. That was the year oh. that Alice uh, in Wonderland came out. He was dressed as the Mad Hatter. And, in fact, there was an Alice in Wonderland room with this long table um, where he sat at the head of the table. Um, and Tim Burton was there as well. And, and he, he, like – performed as the Mad Hatter and hosted this little party for, for, for all the kids. It was crazy. Wow. It was so amazing. Um, so we uh, met everybody, and then we moved into this room where um, the Obamas and us would take a photo together, uh -huh. all the Star Wars characters and them. And so um, it was Chewbacca, my, and 3PO, and R2, and two Stormtroopers. And... Um, uh, when we walked up, uh, President Obama was laughing again because he was just, he seemed genuinely tickled that we were there. Yeah. And uh, I said, oh, wonderful to see you again. <laughs> and he started laughing. And then he said, oh, uh, C-3PO, uh, you stand next to me. Oh, wait, <laughs> uh, can you say something to Michelle for me? And so I said, oh, why, it's our pleasure to be here. Thank you for the invitation. <laughs> and uh, uh -oh. then she started cracking up. And then, and then we took this photo. And so I, I have this photo now of me and the um, the Obamas um, together, uh, but I'm in the costume, so I don't actually have recorded <laughs> sure. photographic yeah. evidence of me, me. <laughs> with the, at the White House with the president, but it is uh, is in fact I'm in the costume. Um, and the funny thing was uh, Chewbacca, he he you know his he has the fur that hangs down over his hands. Mm -hmm. And so he put his hands on top of the Obama's head so that the fur would hang down like over their eyes. Yeah. And immediately he, he's just doing it because, you know, he's a big, you know, he's, he's a big teddy bear. He's fun. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and immediately the secret service moved in and said, uh, no, don't do that. And so he, he yeah, had to, hold. <laughs> he had to, hold, he had to uh, hover hand his way through the rest of the photo. Um, Fair. And uh, in the photo also, uh, it took a year and a half to get this photo. Wow. By the way, I thought I would never see it. I thought they'd forgotten and wouldn't. They said, well, you're going to get the photo. You're going to get the photo. But a, a year and a half later, we finally got it. came in the mail. And I noticed that Michelle is holding hands with the stormtrooper. 
Oh, nice. And it's the funniest thing because, like, you're looking at this. She's dressed with, like, like a, you know, uh, yeah, leopard kitten ears and, uh, and, um, and she's holding hands with a stormtrooper. I thought that was funny. It's like, uh, that it's gold, you know, <laughs> I said, I, I wanted to say, uh, you're not sympathetic to the empire, are you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, um, uh, so anyway, um, that, and so that whole thing, um, I don't, I don't care to anybody who's, um, what your political persuasion is, uh, meeting a sitting president of the United States. Oh, hundred percent. Oh, cool. hundred percent. Right. It was, it was so, and again, uh, I was just building a costume. Yeah. <laughs> and I wanted to, and I just wanted to, I just wanted to, um, wow. to, you know, uh, to be, be this character. So, um, so anyway, <laughs> that was, that was, Going to the White House and meeting President Obama. That's so cool. You're like, I want to be, I want to be three. I want to dress up as three PO. Next thing you know, you are <laughs> the real life three PO. That's that's how I refer to you to people. By the way, I'm like, you know, Anthony Daniels oh. is three PO, but you're the real life three PO. Like you're the one. That, oh, think about that, it. You're you're operating well, in this <laughs> like supposedly magic. You know, there's there's the screen that separates the quote unquote real world to the to the mm-hmm. world in the screen. But you right. have an experience at the White House where Johnny Depp, as the Mad Hatter, is hosting a tea party. There's no <laughs> screen. That's real life. <laughs> I know. You're that right. guy. That's so cool. <laughs> well, the thing, the thing with uh, – thank you so much for saying that. Uh, what, the thing about the, uh, what I try to do is um, you know, when, when you see C-3PO on the screen um, – you know, um, Anthony Daniels' amazing voice is uh, dubbed over the performance. Mm-hmm. The servo sounds are are added in later, um, and uh, the um, you know, and but it's all and it's all scripted. So you right. are hearing a story being told. Now, if what I what I want my goal was, what would it be like if you were to meet C three PO? in real life like what kind of things would he talk about or like how would he sound yeah. or what would he would he ask me questions or would he notice things around or would he would he does he know everything about earth or would he be lost you know sure. um and and what would that sound like you know the, the actual voice and and the quality of the the sound and stuff and uh so that's that's all the stuff i was thinking about when i was building the costume and when um uh when Disney uh, Parks contacted Lucasfilm um, um, about uh, uh, approving me for um, appearing in the park, um, they uh, now I can I can talk about this now because I I, I don't appear at Star Wars Weekend right. anymore, okay? Because um, that that already happened and that isn't happening anymore. Sure. Um, and uh, so. When I was again in the parks, uh, gosh, it was it was. I don't know if this was better than the White House. In in, in <laughs> for me, it seemed better because it was like a concentrated, like tons of interactions, like personal, custom interactions with these people that that are that is not scripted. Um, I tried to make it very personal and uh, so that it would be an unforgettable moment for as many people as possible. And so here's how I would do that. Um, when someone would come up, I would say, oh, that's my hello, and uh, what is your name? Oh, and nice. Say, oh, uh, my, my name is Brian. Oh, why, Sir Brian, wonderful to meet you. And uh, where are you from? And then that's you'd say, I'm cool. from, from where are you from in Florida? Uh, Naples. Oh, Naples. Okay, you'd say Naples. Oh, the Naples system. Oh, how interesting. I've never heard of this. Is it the thing for droids? Oh, it's so yeah, perfect. He would say, he would, <laughs> he would say, I think it's maybe, yeah, sure. Uh, uh, well, excellent. Uh, uh, R2, did you have a question? And R2 beeps. Um, and uh, and he's commenting on your T-shirt. You have an R2-D2 T-shirt on. Oh, well, he's asking if, uh, what is it, R2? Oh, yes. Uh, no, I don't believe they make these for droids. Besides, <laughs> it wouldn't come in your size anyway. You're gigantic. <laughs> and um, so... So I, I really tried to make uh, each interaction uh, 
really personal. Yeah. And so one day, one day, um, we, uh, I, I got to shut down the old Star Tours at uh, the big Lucasfilm and Disney media event. Um, and then when they reopened it, I got to be there to reopen it with, um, with Anthony Daniels and George Lucas and Bob mm-hmm. Iger and uh, the rest of the cast at, at Disney's Hollywood Studios mm-hmm. in Florida. And, um, uh, you know, as you know, the, the Star Tours ride features our favorite a droid as the pilot that's right as the accidental pilot yeah exactly and um <laughs> and so um so we had this big event where uh we had to appear on the stage um and and they would announce us and anthony daniels recorded pre-recorded some uh voice tracks mm-hmm. and then i then when they announced c-3po and r2d2 uh, oh. we come out on stage and um and, and so we, I, I animated to Anthony Daniels' um, voice, and then uh, George Lucas comes out, and Anthony, well, Anthony Daniels comes out, and then George Lucas came out, and they were standing next to each other, and I was standing on the other side of Anthony Daniels. So George, Ooh. Anthony, and me. Okay, so already, gosh, this is so great. I mean, I've worked with Anthony Daniels many times since then. Um, I'd, I'd worked with him a couple of times uh, then before that and george uh um george says oh uh, uh, why don't you stand next to me and so oh. i i was like yes okay yeah yes yes <laughs> thanks to make <maker. laughs> and uh so then so then anthony daniels moves over and um so then they took this picture and it's george and me and anthony and uh that it, it was it was so awesome brian i i Still, I'm going, you know, like, um, I, I couldn't believe at this point that, that it had gotten this far. And how could it get any better than this? We're, sure. at, the, we're at the parks. and Right, okay. Um, so uh, one day we were, uh, Chris Sanders and I, because at this point Chris Sanders had, had, again, perfected his R2-D2, and now he had been cast as R2 at the parks as well. So now best friends, counterparts, both named Chris, I love we it. were uh, uh, at the parks as R2 and C3PO. He would dress me. He was he he, he was very fast at uh, dressing me, and um, and we were appearing as uh, as the droids at Disney, which was again super. Um, yeah. Oh, and also when I'm interacting with R2, you know, R2 is not actually saying anything in English that is translatable. Right. I have to make up what he's saying while he's saying it. Well, he's beeping, right? So, you know, sometimes I, I would, just as a performer's kind of secret, I would, um, I would, uh, you know, ask him a question, um, and then, and then while he's beeping, I'm literally trying to think of, okay, what, what would his <laughs> response be? Because right. I just yes and ask yes a and, and it has to be, <laughs> yeah, right, right. Um, so, uh, anyway. We, we went to ride one night after we, so we were working from, uh, we had to get up at 7 a.m., be in the park, and then, and then we'd finally get off at uh, 11, at 10.30 p.m. Mm-hmm. So uh, we were performing uh, all day, and we did that uh, for five weekends, and Disney was kind enough to fly me down every weekend for Star Wars weekends. So it was really, really Dude. nice of them um, because I didn't live in Florida. So... We, uh, after one night, the park was still open, so Chris and I went and we rode um, Star Tours, okay? Mm-hmm. So there's this, um, I, I just am looking around the room, there's, there's this girl, she's about 25, sitting in the front row with her dad, who's probably in his, uh, you know, maybe early 60s, and, um, and uh, they're riding the ride. They're right in the front row. Um, you know, c 3 is the pilot, so she's, you know, almost could reach out and touch him if she wanted. Uh-huh. Um, and uh, at the time, I don't, I, I just saw the back of her head until she turned, and then, and then I was like, uh, the next day when I'm doing a meet and greet at C-3PO with R2, this girl and her dad come through the line. Ooh. And I was like, this is this is uh, I was I was so happy and here's why, um, 
I knew that I could make this extra, extra special. And I said, um, oh, flight greetings. Uh, I beg your pardon, but uh, have we met before? Oh, and she goes, nice. she goes, no, I don't think so. I said, oh, just a moment. Uh, have you flown with us on Star Tours? And she said, oh, yes. I said, yes, I remember this. At just last night, you were in the front row. Oh, I could see you. Oh, man. You, and is this, your, is this your father? And she said, yes. But when I said, I remember you were in the front row. <laughs> oh, that's it. Her eyes got so big. And then she looked at her dad, and they both were like, mouth open, like, what? <laughs> is this real? <laughs> like, how is this? You know, because really, it's like a magic trick. You can't explain. You don't know how it's happening. Right. There has to be some explanation, but you can't think of what that explanation is. And so I just kept going. I was like, um, oh, I'm terribly sorry. And I remember the destinations they went to because mm -hmm. I was on the same one. So I, I remember, you know, I, I don't know if it was like uh, the, the pod race on, uh, you know, the Bunta Eve pod race mm -hmm. um, on uh, Tatooine or whatever. But I mentioned that, too. I said, oh, I'm terribly sorry. It's not my fault. And then R2 is beeping. I said, don't get technical with me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and so we're but but we have this uh, really special, special moment that that uh, was unexplainable how the magic was happening. But it really was magic. And it just made me the whole experience reinforce that what happens at Disney parks and with characters and the nostalgia that we feel for these characters and stuff is really a special uh, magical thing. It sounds cheesy to say it's magical, but it is. I know I keep saying that, but it's, oh, you're it's, right. It's only magic because you you don't know how it's happening or how it's working. Um, For sure. So anyway, that was. I love that it also that was, that has like amazing. an impact on it. Doesn't matter who you are, whether you're the president or just a person riding a ride, like. It's this right. stuff is, that's right, and it's lasting. Like I remember watching because I've been following you for a while on social media, and I okay. remember watching Ride with Norman Reedus, and then he uh -huh. was riding with Dave Chappelle, and he was talking oh, about yeah. have you ever had like a celebrity encounter where you freaked out? And Dave Chappelle was like, "I met C three PO one time at the Oscars," and I was like, "I know that guy, <laughs> <laughs> dude." That's right. That's right. Dude. Yeah, that was that. that. <laughs> Gold. So, uh, let me. Let, I know what. What a. Thank you for bringing that. Up. That was. Uh, uh, when I was I was doing uh, a Disney cruise. Um, it was a Star Wars day at sea, mm -hmm. and uh, and Lucasfilm had contacted me and said, um, "We need to get you off the ship uh, because wow. <laughs> there is." We, yeah, we, um, I mean, they sent me on the ship. I didn't, you know, they, they sent me, said that I could, uh, that they approved me and cast me for this, this part to, as a Disney crew. So mm -hmm. anyway, um, we need to see if we can get you off the ship because, um, we've cast you in the Oscars. Dude. Uh, and, and they said, now, um, uh, we have to confirm whether, It'll be you or um, the original, right. um, and and I said, oh yeah, of course. So when they said that, I was like, oh okay, yeah, that, I'm sure, I'm sure, Anthony will do it, you know. Um, so anyway, I did, I wasn't getting my hopes up. So then they called back and we're like, yeah, it is. Um, it uh, we are going to use you for it. Wow. And I was he was he was working on um, the Force Awakens at the time. That's a good excuse. Because uh, this would have been fair. This would, yeah, <laughs> this would have been uh, February of 2016. Mm -hmm. um, so it worked out. I was the first one off the ship, and uh, they flew me from uh, where we got back. What was it uh, in what's the port down there in Florida? Um, Fort Lauderdale, but Cape Canaveral. Miami, Cape Canaveral. Oh no, is that a Cape Canaveral? A is one yes. Port? Okay, there you go. We flew there to um, Hollywood, and um, we and, – well, I'm sorry. When I say we, um, my wife, Rachel, who's a very talented uh, voice artist, yes. who we actually met at Disney. Oh, nice. Uh, when, when I worked there, 
she um, she's a, was a Disney performer for 13 years, and uh, among many other things, but uh, she is what you would say friends with uh, Mickey and Minnie. Amazing. And um, so um, anyway, we we met there, we became friends, and later um, we started dating, and then we got married. So we've been married almost six years. Right. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, so. Anyway, so she, we're lucky that she, uh, Chris Sanders, uh, trained her to dress me. So um, she is, has gotten very fast at dressing and undressing uh, me in the costume. And um, <laughs> so we, we flew to Hollywood, and we're both super excited. And, and she, um, so when we, uh, we got there, and uh, they, you know, we had the whole, the whole thing um, was just like what you would think if you were a presenter on the Oscars from, from the um, big black SUVs that pull up to, to take you to the hotel to your arrival where your driver t- tells the guy, the security guard at the, at the Dolby Theater gate, um, I have C-3PO. Yes. <laughs> you know? <And laughs> You've so, made it. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So um, we, we got – uh, there uh, and we rolled up. They had two IDs for me. One was Chris Bartlett, uh, C-3PO presenter, and then they had one ID that was just C-3PO. That's so and, cool. Um, so yeah. So now uh, keep in mind, I always just stay in character uh, when I'm when I'm doing this this stuff. Um, mm. And when so because again, nobody like when you're backstage at the Oscars or anywhere at the Oscars, you see. Um, Lady Gaga walking around, or you see Dave Grohl walking around, or Christopher Christopher Walken walking around. You don't you don't see people dressed as those people, right? Right. So the same by the same token, no one wants to see a person dressed as C three PO walking around. They want to see C three PO. True. And, and you how got a badge would you to prove it? <laughs> Is he? Yes, exactly. <laughs> which I wore, um, and it was hilarious. So uh, w- how would he be walking around? Is he? Uh, well, I just made it that you know he's. He is fluent in in uh, all our customs, but every he's usually lost or confused. Not you know, I've never been here before. I'm fluent with your customs, but I don't really, you know, I've never done this particular thing before. Right. You know, um, as, as you know, as the he 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 always feels like he's a fish out of water kind of a character. Yeah, he's always um, in the middle I love of that. the learning I curve. Love... <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good way. To, that's a good way to put it. He's fluent in over six million forms of communication, but you know, he's he's always just a little behind. That's right. And um, and uh, you know, uh, I just want to stop and say, uh, um, God bless Anthony Daniels and his mm. performance and his his golden voice and all that we have grown up with, with him as, uh, as not only as C-3PO, but I mean, in numerous other shows and special, um, uh, special presentations on TV or the making of or whatever. I mean, he's done so much. Um, Mm -hmm. and I'm so, uh, humbled and grateful and honored to have been able to work very closely uh, in person with him on several occasions, um, and uh, it, it's just it's just again such a dream come true. It's uh, it's just it, this is a character that I love, and um, really grateful uh, to Anthony Daniels for his um, being able to team up with him on on a few of these things. So, uh, so that's how I was going to treat it. I was going to walk around. Um, uh, another R2 builder, uh, Mike Senna, was, uh, had provided R2, um, oh, yeah. and he and I – do you know Mike? I do. You know who he is? I know who he is. Yeah. I don't know him personally. Big fan. Okay. Okay. Right, right. And so um, that's how we were going to treat it. We are just going to walk uh, – you know, wherever we had to go, we are going to do it. Uh, you know, he, he hides in the, in the crowd because he's um, performing and puppeteering R2. And uh, that way, when you see the droids, they look autonomous, like they're just walking. I'm always, you know, either arguing with R2 or, yep. <laughs> or um, pointing out something or, you know, telling him to behave or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so we, I, I uh, just finished putting on the costume and I come out of my dressing room and boom, Lady Gaga and her entourage is right there. They, we, we just almost 
I mean, we both, she came around the corner. I came out uh, with Rachel and a couple other people. And um, and she's a huge Star Wars fan. Yeah. Genuinely huge Star Wars fan. And so when we saw each other, we both at the same time went, oh, oh, my. You know, <laughs> oh, my goodness. And she comes up and she goes, oh, oh, hello, uh, Mr. Sweepio, hello. And she, <laughs> she went to shake my hand and I said, oh, Miss Gaga. I'm very much looking forward to your performance. <laughs> oh. And, uh, and uh, anyway, it was a really uh, funny moment, which they filmed, and it's, you could find it on YouTube if you look up c and Gaga. Um, and, and then she uh, gives c a kiss. And then nice. she, um, you know, like on the golden cheek, and then she uh, leans over and says hello to R2 and gives him a kiss on his dirty dome. And um, <laughs> anyway, it was a very fun uh, moment. So then uh, we're walking toward where we need to go. Um, R2 went to park somewhere. Um, to collect and, himself. Uh, so Rachel, right, Rachel <laughs> was my uh, guardian angel, and we walked around. Uh, and, and I was just kept running into all these people who wanted to take a picture and, but these are all people that you've seen on movies or TV for the last, you know, 25 years, yeah. you know? <laughs> and uh, so, so, so I'd be, um, some of them, I will admit, I did not recognize. Sure. Now, I have, first, I have very limited vision, but I can still see and get around. But um, I'm usually looking at their chest because in the costume, if I look at their eyes, it, the, the, the focus of the character looks like, He's looking up, kind of aloof. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> I have to, I have to, you know, different costumes are like that. Um, you know, where the the focus of the character, you have to get that right, so it looks like they're looking right at them, even if you're not looking right at them. Yep. So, um, so uh, I would, we just went around and would, um, you know, greet people, and then I would, you know, I would say to Rachel, who was dressed in her you know, Oscar gown and her hair was all done and it was, it was an awesome moment. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would just say, are you sure this is the right way? <laughs> My, <laughs> is this a droid, a, a droid maintenance facility? <laughs> My goodness. And, uh, <laughs> so we would do that stuff. And then, and then, uh, when, and, and Dave Grohl, who that year sang, uh, Blackbird for the memoriam, yeah. um, just before he went out, uh, he and I, um, we took pictures and talked, and he said, oh, this just, I, I'm just, I'm melting. I feel like I'm seven years old again. And I was like, mission accomplished. Right. <laughs> Check. Oh, so great. Right, yes. Um, so then uh, uh, I will, a little performer's secret is, you know, Anthony Daniels recorded the, the lines, and I – got these lines while I was on the cruise and um, nice. I planned each individual um, uh, each line had its own animation so I would I would just I didn't get any direction from anybody I just I mm-hmm. would just say uh, or you know to myself okay I don't want all the animations to look the same I would okay for this one I'm gonna turn to the right and gesture this way or this way I'm gonna do this with my arm or on this line I'm gonna do this so sure. I had it all planned out and I had practiced it and rehearsed it mm-hmm Okay. Okay. Um, so our big moment comes to go out uh, and and do it. We we did have a rehearsal, so we, I got there early and we did a rehearsal and stuff. And I made sure when I even when I did the rehearsal, to the first time that the crew and everyone sees three PO is they see him and R two. Right. And so you you have this um, everybody has this genuine like effusive a light, happy moment that really goes into making it a genuine, mm. mo- magical uh, moment on stage. Right. Because they, they're they not seeing, you know, a guy with his head off. They're seeing the, they're, these characters they grew up with. That's right. Um, um, so now BB-8 was there as well, cute little BB-8. And, yeah. uh, and he did great. It was his first Oscar appearance. Um, this is C-3PO's second uh, Oscar right. appearance. The first one was in in 1978, so mm-hmm. he was like, you know, uh, it was it was a long that was a long time ago. Um, and uh, anyway, so we did our 
uh, our appearance where I go out and and C-3PO says, this is not the way to our seats, you know, <laughs> talking to R2. Oh, you know. yes. Um, and, yeah, and, uh, but again, uh, you know, Rachel was asking, um, are, are you nervous to go out there? And I said, I, I, I am not nervous, you know, because I prepared. Right. Um, but I couldn't do this without you, because literally I couldn't. She was dressing me. Uh, she was walking me around. I was, you know, right. backstage is kind of dark, so I couldn't. And someone took a picture of me saying to her that just before I went out. And it's a, her, her eyes always sparkle, um, but it just seemed like they were extra sparkly at that moment. It was just really an awesome moment. So oh, I, that's my beautiful. favorite moment and picture from the, from the Oscars um, is that moment right before we go out. So um, Beautiful. Uh, so... <laughs> So when I went out, uh, Meryl Streep's in the front row and Jennifer Lawrence and like every, I mean, what you expect, it's what you see on TV. That's what I was seeing. But they're just regular people. Right. Like who, when you think about celebrities, they are just people who, that a lot of people know what they do for a living. Right. You know, like, like if, if everybody knew, um, that Joe was a truck driver, if everyone in the United States knew this, this this Joe truck driver, doesn't matter what he does for a living, everyone would know it and he would be a celebrity. It's just because a lot of people know what they do for a living. Right. Okay. I never <laughs> and so about they're just, re- they're just, right. They're just, and so when I met uh, Lady Gaga, she is as much of a next door neighbor kind of a person as you could imagine. She's not the, what, not this super um, uh, hyper pop diva that, that uh, her stage character used to be. Right. Um, and she, she, it just talks with you. Like it wants to spend time with you and just is so, it's just so genuine and sweet. Uh, and I'm not, I, I, you know, I've met people who are not like that. Sure. Um, but, 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 so I'm not just blowing smoke. She really was just, just a regular, sweet, very nice, genuine, uh, person. Mm-hmm. And so when we got, um, so I went out and we did our thing. And, uh, you know, you always wonder, like, there is, there is a little bit of an unknown thing, which is, what if something happened that I tripped? Oh, yes. Because that's, that's that, like, um, that's a, I can plan my animation. I can, what's that? That's a, that's a warranted fear. Yeah, I mean, what if, what if there's a slippery mark on the floor that I hadn't seen before or whatever? You know, so that's the only thing that I get a little bit nervous about, but I, I just, oh, I luckily never have, I'm knocking on wood right now, um, <laughs> and uh, and I just went out and just did it like I was just doing it in my kitchen or something. I just, I just right. did it uh, normal, and um, and it went totally fine. Uh, and the and the the shine was was so it, it just looked it looked great the lighting on it everything was just they just did such a good job. Mm-hmm. So when I got done, I went backstage and we changed and I changed and put on my regular suit with my bow tie and and uh, my pocket square and I came out of my uh, dressing room and boom there's Lady Gaga again. Oh nice. She was like just getting done with something else and. Uh, and so she uh, was getting ready to go on, and um, I believe, if I remember the order of the show right. Anyway, so when I came out, um, the producer introduced us again and said, um, Gaga, this is Chris Bartlett. He is the one who performed C-3PO. And her eyes got real big, and her this is the biggest smile. And, and she goes, oh, my gosh, this was this – was, she goes, you know, I was just – I, I, I hope it was okay that I filmed you before, you know, when we met. I just wanted to my – I just wanted um, – you know, if I was a 16-year-old um, and I saw that my my favorite, you know, singer was meeting C-3PO for the first time, I would have just exploded. So I just was really happy to get it, and I hope it's okay that I filmed it. I was like, oh, yes, it was, it so was cool. great. I'm so glad you did because I hadn't – you know, I, I would have never had evidence of that really cool moment. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> So we got, so then we, uh, we got a photo and then she also, uh, I said, um, could I, could I please introduce you to my wife? She's a humongous fan. And so, 
uh, I introduced, I said, Rachel, come here. I want you to meet somebody. Oh. <laughs> <I'm> so <laughs> and so then, I, so then I introduced her to Lady Gaga, and they just sat and talked for a little bit. She's in her big, flowing white um, uh, dress that she wore for the performance, and uh, it was it was just uh, Rachel started crying. And got you know, she's just really it was just an emotional, really fun moment. Yeah. Um, so so anyway, uh, ultimate brownie was, points there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it worked out okay. So anyway, then after uh, or, or before stars go out on the to give um, to go uh, present, mm-hmm. um, and then after. After they go out, while they're waiting, they're in a green room. Um, sorry, they, yes, there is a green room. But when I met Dave Chappelle, I that was right after, and they have this kind of like little get together room where after the stars go on, they can go in this room. And um, I guess that was the green room. It was the green room, um, and they get a photo with an Oscar, a giant Oscar, and uh, and they had R2 and C3PO and BB-8 go into the green room. And which is a big, it looks like an apartment. It doesn't, it's not like a little room. It's like, wow. an apartment. it's that size. It's really nice. So Dave Chappelle was in there and I, I recognized him immediately. And I was surprised to see him because, you know, he was gone for a while right? and um, I, I hadn't seen like a special or anything that he was in. So when I saw him, I recognized him right away. And I said, Oh my goodness, Sir David, it's so nice to see you. <laughs> <laughs> and he, started, he, he started cracking up and he goes, uh, uh, he said, um, oh, what, what was the word he used? Uh, he said that, I know it's a family show, so I won't say exactly what he said, but I mean, he said, you can. <laughs> uh, he said, he said, oh, that crap is real. <laughs> but he said <laughs> another word. Anyway, um, but anyway, he's, he's like, you know, he does this kind of slow motion laugh, you know, that he does. And then, and then we took, uh, um, a couple of pictures together and um, but that was pretty much all it was I just said Sir David it's so nice to see you and uh, that's what he's talking about when he said oh, oh when I met C-3PO but I didn't know at the time because he's so kind of low-key yeah, oh, yeah. I didn't know at the time that it had it was such a moment uh, for him but gosh uh, that that's the whole that's the that's the biggest most fun part of, of being the character is that uh, that that people have that kind of a feeling that they are meeting C three PO. Um, oh yeah, for sure. So so that that was pretty awesome. Um, and now there was. Uh, um, do, you, do you mind if I go back in time for just a second about Absolutely. one of one of the appearances? Okay. Um, in uh, 2011, remember uh, Disney bought Lucasfilm in 2012. Yes. And they announced it on Halloween weekend in 2012. Mm-hmm. Well, earlier that year, sorry, it was 2012 that um, we did this. Earlier that year, uh, Chris Sanders and I um, appeared on the Disney Channel show, um, Ant Farm, which is like, it was kind of like a high school kids sitcom, you mm-hmm. know, kind of silly, like um, Disney Channel uh, sitcom. Sure. And um, so these kids are like, uh, between 16 and 21, but they're playing high school students, sure. and uh, they were. We, we, um, I was again so so excited. This is being used, in, uh, you know, on the Disney Channel. This was just so neat. But at the time, Disney hadn't said they were buying Lucasfilm. We didn't know anything about this, so we filmed it in March. And um, I did the same thing when the producer said, "Hey, why don't you come out? You don't have to put the helmet on." Uh, and and just come out and uh, uh, meet the cast, and then you know we'll figure out you know, we'll show you what you, we want you to do and everything. Mm-hmm. And I was like, no, I'm just gonna go out as C-3PO, and these kids will just meet uh, that character for the first time, and like that. So when I went out, I did the same thing. I, I, are you sure this is the right place? I, I'm terribly sorry. I beg your pardon. <laughs> Please don't get up. <laughs> um, and then would uh, you know wander out there and. Um, uh, and so when they met the character for the first time, it was, again, this really genuine, like, surprise and wow and happy feeling. So mm-hmm. that right immediately after that, we uh, shot this scene with, that was supposed to be at uh, Skywalker Ranch. What's happening is the characters are on a scavenger hunt. Um, nice. And uh, one of the 
one of the things is they have to go to Skywalker Ranch and get George Lucas's autograph. And um, in the episode, C-3PO and R2 are manning the gate um, <laughs> at Luke, <laughs> Luke at Skywalker Ranch. And, uh, and so uh, this was the first time that I um, got to do the voice on television. Ooh, and then, cool. and then I was uh, was so excited to see that they actually had credited me because normally they just say C three PO as himself, but Disney right. um, credited me, and that was very uh, I was so grateful for that. Um, but we filmed it in March, and then it never aired. We were like, "Why isn't it airing?" Well, um, uh, the weekend that uh, Disney announced that they bought Lucasfilm. Uh, was, again, Halloween weekend. That was the weekend this episode aired. So the first time Star Wars characters appeared on the Disney Channel was C-3PO and R2-D2. And that was the weekend that that Disney bought Lucasfilm. So um, that was a huge honor. I didn't know that was coming. I didn't even know that Disney was going to be buying Lucasfilm. Um, But such a – it just – when we saw it in that light, Wow, it was uh, Sanders and I were just like, I can't believe this. This is just this is so amazing. Yeah. We just built these things for fun, you yeah, know? I, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. Um, That's incredible. So that uh, I I still get residual checks from nice. Ant Farm. I just got one this week. It was four dollars and sixty eight cents. Big time Killing active it. life hashtag. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, but it was. Yeah, that was that. We, my wife and I, always joke when we get a SAG uh, check in the mail. It's always for Ant Farm, and it's always like a dollar sixty-three or like four dollars and sixty-eight cents. <laughs> We're going it's out. Silly. Uh, yeah, that's right. Um, yeah. So Dude, anyway, that's, that's so cool. If it's funny, if it's, if weird it's, details. If it's one thing that I've learned having, let's see, this will be your episode will be fifty-seven. So one thing I've learned after fifty-seven episodes is that. Luck absolutely is preparation meets opportunity, and you've proven that, which is amazing. But I also kind of like that the moment where you're like, "This is gonna be, this is gonna be real." I'm, I'm going for the chrome. You put some skin in the game, and then the universe uh-huh. is like, "Oh, okay, we're gonna kick it up," and you're killing it. <laughs> you're killing it. Well, I, I believe. Uh... Uh, you know, I, I believe there is a little bit more to it than that, but I, I believe that, um, you know, you're, you try to be a decent person and you try and uh, use your talents for, you know, use your powers for good. And, and then just, um, you, you do your regular job, but, you know, my reg- we haven't talked about that, but my, my, um, regular job I've worked in uh, video games for 13 years but been a, a graphic artist for 20 and professionally and that's my regular job I worked on um, Gears of War since the beginning and then I uh, worked on Fortnite which just uh, is killing what? it now um, and yeah I yeah in fact on Fortnite do you play Fortnite I know a lot of people that do okay all right well if you play Fortnite um, if you, if you, you're, you're playing your character, if you, uh, back yourself up against the wall, mm-hmm. um, and then hit build, you, your character pulls out this, um, this, uh, blueprint, this page. So I designed the idea that you pull out a blueprint, um, when you're what? about to build something to show that you're going to be building something. So, um, I came up with the idea to, to, uh, you're going to pull out a bl- blueprint, and then I designed what the blueprint looks like. And I totally forgot this because I did it in, like, 2010. They worked – Epic Games worked on this game for a long time. Um, in the corner, I put, as the architect, was C.F. Bartlett. Uh, and I totally was I – was, I, I totally forgot I had done this, and I was playing it with my uh, kids. And uh, this uh, accidentally had, uh, was up against the wall, and I pulled up the blueprint. So the blueprint was really big on the screen. And I was like, whoa. Whoa! I can't believe they left that in there. You know, but anyway, yeah. my kids think it's pretty neat that uh, that I um, have evidence that I worked on it. Yeah, um, <laughs> anyway, so then I worked on uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider and uh, now Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and shipped um, uh, a lot of games at Epic, and uh, and then now oh, and then I worked on Star Wars. Totally, totally coincidentally, I worked on Star Wars uh, game at Disney Interactive. And then, um, which 
it hasn't come out yet. It's been announced, but it hasn't come out yet. And then um, now I'm an art director um, on at the studio that brought you Call of Duty. What? So that's uh, where I work now. Yeah. You know, you realize you just solidified that you're going to have to come back on my show, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the project that I'm I'm working on is not you know, it's not been announced. So, of course, um, of I, that's, you know, can't, can't talk about that, but, uh, it's the studio that brought you Call of Duty. That's all. Of I course. Say. That's insane. Um, I work at Infinity Ward in, uh, in LA. So, um, that's just my regular job. And when I was little, let me back up again, yeah, Brian, of when I was little, after I saw Star Wars, I saw the making of Star Wars. Um, I, I, you know, I was also played, I, I don't know how old you are, but I, I was an Atari kid, so I, I was nice. playing, um, that was, that was my, um, that's dating me, but, um, <laughs> that I was playing, uh, Atari and video games, uh, when I was little and then Star Wars came out and I had this, these two things going all the time, uh, Star Wars and video games. I was watching, you know, behind the scenes and the making of, I said, when I was little, I said, I I want to work for George Lucas and I want to make video games. <laughs> that was my dream. I want to work for George Lucas and I want to make video games. I didn't, I didn't, you know, I, I didn't know that, you know, those don't think those things are not, don't seem related. Um, but ultimately I, um, I just, I've been really blessed to be able to do both. Uh, yeah. again, uh, I just, uh, I, I believe that because uh, because all of the things that had to happen for those things to to line up, uh, I just believe that there is a force in the universe that um, that you know I totally helps agree. You accomplish the things that you want to do. Uh, if you're a, a easy person to work with, uh, a, you know somebody who is um, gets the work done and. Uh, you know, professional about it. That's that's what I try to do. I I've run uh, across you know scores of celebrities and work with them, and I never try to make it into a oh hey can I get your autograph you know because like even though inside I really would really like to but of course. I don't know <laughs> what I would really do with that other than I'm just glad I get to work with them right and uh, like I was listening to. Uh, your interview with details and and oh, um, he and I he, he, yeah what what a <laughs> glorious guy I right? love D. I mean he 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 is he is the sweetest uh, kind of guy and I'm so excited for you to see um, to see him in solo I can't wait I can't wait he's one of those people yes. like I'm I'm obsessed with creatures and aliens and the whole thing so yes. I, I've had yeah I think four creature performers on my show. And I love, oh, cool. I, like D specifically, one of my favorite things about him, and you actually have this in common, is that you both have very specific experiences that very few people will ever have. You know, you know what it's like to be the real life 3PO in these suits, going to the Oscars, hanging out with the Obamas. Mm -hmm. No one has that, <laughs> you know, whereas D, like <laughs> D was in a boy band in the 90s and opened for Janet Jackson. Like what? Oh, that's right. What? <laughs> that's right. Insane. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. Insane. Yeah. But I mean, he's he. I I love the um the he is one of these people. D is one of these people who is so uh not only outgoing but also so giving. Oh, hundred percent. You know, I mean, of his time, um, of of everything. I mean, he's just a very giving guy. And so I, I really, uh, really hope to be able to work with him someday. Um, you know, ultimately, um, the goal is to, uh, be able to work, um, uh, in, you know, whether it's Neil Scanlon's, uh, creature shop or, Dude, um, nice. you know, or John Favreau's creature shop. I don't know. Right. Um, and, hint, hint. Uh, right. <laughs> yeah. Yes. John, if you're listening. Yeah. Um, Come on my show. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, what did you say? I said, John, if you're listening, come on my show. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, Dude, I'm with you. So that's so cool. I love Dee's laugh too. Yeah. He's one of those like when he's laughing, you're I just know, having a good time. Stop. I know. I know. Best. He's just such a neat guy. But when you when you see uh, him in solo, I won't give any of it away. But it is a. Uh, 
it's it's one of the things that you want to have as a as a, uh, whether it's a creature performer or an actor, you want to have a scene like this uh, in so a cool. production, and you're you're gonna love it. You're gonna love it. He's I can't he's wait. Great, and yeah. So um, that's amazing. It's amazing. Uh, I love what you said yeah. that like it, it, you know if you're a good person and you put in the work and like you're good to work with. Like I have this theory that. Uh, so like when you're a kid, you know, you have these dreams, right? And I would say, statistically speaking, the average person will go through a bunch of different things they want to be as they grow up. You know, you want to be a cowboy, mm-hmm. you want to be a cop, you want to be a firefighter, you want to be an astronaut, whatever it is. Sure. But there are some yeah. people that just know, like deep in their core of their being, I want to do this. <laughs> and it doesn't change. You know, they'll go through phases and stuff, but the core is always there. And I believe that's put there. That if you're willing to put in the work, it's almost like it's meant to happen if you meet it halfway. Yeah, you know, yeah. and I love it. Yeah, I, I love it. I'm glad. I'm glad you said that. My, uh, there was a point. I, I won't say that. Uh, I will say that it was always there in the back. But mm-hmm. when you're going through life, you there, you know, things happen, and you're like, um, maybe I'll have to put that on hold, you know, and uh, have to do other things like, you know, as a as a young person, you know, working at a clothing store or something until you, until you get to do the thing you want to do, you've got to do some things that you don't really want to do. Oh yeah. Still uh, but bills. Because it's work, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but, uh, when I, um, when I was in college, I or just about to start college. I, I went and I told my dad one day we were talking and I said, uh, you know, cause I, I wanted to be uh, an artist. Mm-hmm. Um, cause I thought that's, what, how I'd be able to work uh, for George in yep. some way, you know, I didn't know how. And I, and then, and then I had second thoughts and I told my dad, you know, cause I, all through high school, this was the plan. And, uh, and I said, dad, maybe I should, you know, maybe I should do something that's more practical. Like maybe I should be an optometrist. Mm-hmm. And my dad goes, I had no desire about, you know, for yeah. eyes or anything <laughs> like that. I just, I just thought something people are always going to have eye problems. So right. anyway, uh, my dad stopped me. He's an accountant for, he was an accountant for the federal government. Very, he was like, okay, just stop. He said, <laughs> you, you do what you're good at and you will be happy. Cause I know what it's like to go every day to a job that I don't like. Man. So you do, you, yeah, you do what you're good at or you do what you want to do. What, what makes you happy. And the the money or whatever that will follow, but you do what you're good at. He knew. I mean, he knew that I was good at um, as a as a graphic artist. So uh, it wasn't like I was saying, you know, I wanted to, you know, take pottery classes or something. Not that you know. I mean, I'm sure there's very talented pottery makers. I just uh, not for he you. knew that I was good at <laughs> good at right. Not for me. He was. He knew that I was good at what I was doing, and and so it, I will always credit him for uh encouraging me to stay the course yeah and do and follow it and um so that was i mean it was it was uh that kind of weird thinking that got me the job at epic games in the first place i had i'd been a graphic artist for many years and and then i never thought about going into games but a friend of mine said you should apply over at epic games they all drive lamborghinis (laughs) (laughs) and i was like well, I'm not really a Lamborghini kind of guy, but, you know, I mean, I'd love to work in games. That was, I never thought they would need a graphic artist. Well, it turned out um, they didn't have a UI guy, a user interface guy, a graphic designer to design heads-up displays and all that stuff. Uh-huh. But uh, when I when I applied there, I had um, I'd recently been laid off, so I was, you know, kind of desperate. I needed to get work, yeah. and I um, I sent in my portfolio – and I called him right away that afternoon. Like I, I emailed it in the morning, and then I called him in the afternoon. And I, and I said, uh, hey, this is Chris Bartlett. I sent in my um, my portfolio uh, today. I just wanted to see if I could get an appointment to talk to someone. And the, and uh, Ann on the other line, Ann said, um, we have 400 people that we're going through, so oh. we'll call you when we get to you. And I was like, oh, man, I need a job. I can't wait for them to go through 400 people. What could I do <laughs> to get to the top of this pile? Mm-hmm. So. I, I said, I, I was like, I have this uh, weird idea. What if I put on a Stormtrooper costume and went down to Epic Games and just 
delivered my like URL to my website to my portfolio, maybe at least they'll remember me. That's how you, know? you do and it. And like they'll remember. Oh, okay, right. So, so I put on uh, this. This is in two thousand and five. I put on uh, my sand trooper. I had a full sand trooper that I had built. So it was all dirty. Had a giant, um, the Lewis gun, uh, the, the the biggest gun oh, yeah. that the stormtroopers carried. And uh, and I had a backpack and everything. And I w- went down there and uh, suited up in the parking lot behind the van, and um, and we marched in. I, w- I went right past the FBI uh, office that was in that <laughs> building, and uh, went up to the sixth floor. And I and I, I rode the elevator to the sixth floor. I was by myself in the in the costume. Um, Amazing. And I was just I was just going to stay in character, um, and just deliver. I'd made this like mini stormtrooper. I had, like took an action figure of a, of a sand trooper and put it on a little stand, and I put my URL on it. And I was just going to leave it just with somebody and then leave, um, just so they could go. Oh my gosh, this, this is the guy who the stormtrooper delivered his URL, whatever. Yeah. So. I got to I got to the top I got to the uh, top of the floor and the door opened and the head of animation was there was standing there Jay Hostel nice. and I said I just said um, I said uh, uh, which way to Epic Games <laughs> and uh, and he goes oh it's the it's this way and he's still like what are you what is happening <laughs> doing here <laughs> and yeah and. Uh, so I, I went around the corner, and just then, all of the offices, all the doors opened, and into the hallway where I was flooded uh, all of the employees, every one of the employees of Epic Games. And I was like, what? How, how could I have timed this any better? The reason why they were going they're all going to a company meeting. And it just so happened that I had gotten there right as they were all coming out. Dude. And they were asking me, are, are you are – you, here to are you here from Lucasfilm and I I didn't okay I didn't say that I wasn't of course um, I just said <laughs> I just said I just said uh, I'm here to deliver a message <laughs> and, and they were like oh oh okay yeah sure he must be from Lucasfilm oh, we must be doing some kind of a partnership with LucasArts this is awesome <laughs> Get anyway hyped. so um, <laughs> right yeah so I was uh, people were you know, and talking to me, and I would just talk back to them in, in character and stuff, pretending that I was TK409, this stormtrooper, not that I did not say that I was Chris Bartlett. Um, anyway, so uh, this guy introduced me to, um, he was like, this is the CEO of the company. Well, this is the CEO. <laughs> and, and I was like, oh, okay, all right. They're, now they're having fun with me. It's just a bunch of guys, and they're just having fun with me. And so I was like, I was like, Oh, hello. <laughs> and, and you know, I was just like he—he he was just like a like a young guy in shorts and glasses. You know, I was like, okay, it's not this is not the CEO. Right. Not enough around. to impress us. Anyway, <laughs> right, right. But uh, anyway, it turned out it was Tim Sweeney, um, the oh. CEO and and uh, uh, originator of Epic Games, and uh, he was he was uh, kind of a soft spoken guy, but really, um, you know, genuinely smiling and excited to meet a uh, stormtrooper. And why, why the heck was I there? Right. <laughs> so, um, I said, uh, you know, um, uh, I said, uh, I'm looking for the art director. And they're like, Oh, here he comes. This is a Jerry O'Flaherty. He's coming down the hall. And Jerry is a huge star Wars fan. Um, and so, uh, I got to talk to him. I said, uh, I'm here to deliver a message for Chris Bartlett and nice. handed in my little figure. And he goes, uh, he was like, oh, yes, I'm familiar with his work. He's a graphic designer. And, and inside I was like, oh, boom, Sweet. that's great. That's great. That's <laughs> just what I needed. Now now I can go. And he goes, um, uh, wait, are you Chris Bartlett? <laughs> Uh-oh, the moment. <laughs> and, then, and I was like, uh, uh, yes, Chris. <laughs> and uh, so then, so he's like, now. "Oh man, this is awesome!" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was like, "Oh, this is awesome. You look great. This is, you know, this is great." And I said, "Well, uh, you know." And then I and I just said, uh, "Well, all right, nice to meet you." And then I I went and I, a couple of people wanted some pictures, and I just got on the elevator and got out of there. You know, short and sweet. Leave them wanting more. And yeah, uh, and w- by the time I got home, uh, I had an email from Jerry, and he said. Wow! Well done today. That was 
that totally uh, we we had seen your work we we uh, were wanting to call you but that just sent you to the top of the pile and so then I I got the job uh, not because I dressed up as a stormtrooper because I had done the work but mm-hmm. also because I had dressed up as a stormtrooper <laughs> and that's how you make an so impression that was yeah that's yeah. amazing that may be it, the it greatest a, interview of all time for any job. <laughs> Well done. <laughs> you took control of well, your own uh, interview. Later, <laughs> yes, later my, my friend who worked at uh, Motorola uh, was telling me, um, oh, my gosh, I just read the funniest article uh, the other day of this guy who dressed up as a stormtrooper and got a job. <laughs> and I was like, um, was it this story? And yeah. I sent him the link that I had written because I had blogged it. He was yeah, like, yeah. yeah. And I was like, oh, that that was me. That's anyway, right. um <laughs> No, but you know, uh, Brian, I'm a firm believer in uh, that uh, you you try to uh, do your best, and um, and and like I said, you be professional, just be easy to work with. It you you will be amazed how easy it is to get more work when you're just easygoing to work with. Sure. And uh, um, you know, like you, you're a very friendly just you know, easygoing kind of guy. Oh, and, stop it. The, and and that's, that is, that is people want to work with people who are going to do work and do the work and be nice to work with. Not someone who's going to be running around wanting autographs or, or photos or uh, trying to make a connection with them or whatever. Just do the work I agree. and, um, and you'll just get more work. And then, then you can go home and crawl in bed and just giggle yourself to sleep because it's so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. And like it's something yeah. to be yeah. it, gen, genuine authenticity like goes a long way, I think. You know, and it's yeah. if you yeah. talk to people as people and connect with them on like a human level, not like especially the entertainment industry. Like right. A lot of people it's like you don't yeah. know if they're trying to get something from you, you know, and it's like using you to get to the next level or whatever it is. It's like, dude, just right. they're people, right. just be people, have a real connection and it it'll go. It'll go. Just talk to people. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. That's why I say this show, I don't call it, like, it's a podcast, yes, but I never call it an interview because it's really not. It's just a conversation. Just talking to people about whatever pops up, you know? It's just cool. Oh, well, that's awesome. It it felt so, yeah, very natural. Uh, You're, you're, um, this is a lot of fun. So, um, can you believe we've been talking for over two hours? (laughs) Oh, has it? Wow. It's been over two. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, so I'm sorry. Uh, Did you have have any other questions? Uh, I know I kind of talked a lot. No, that's that's the point. I drive. and uh, okay. (laughs) Okay. uh, It's called The Interesting Podcast, not because I'm interesting, but because I have people Uh, on that are. And uh, I'm just uh, glad we can make it work, and I I hope you had a good time. uh, Like this, you gave me. I did, I did, Brian. Dude, this was great. I will tell you, this is. This is only the second time that I've uh, given an interview like this because I do. Really? Um, yeah, yeah. Because, you know, like on, uh, well, a part of it is because of, um, you know, I, I want to respect Anthony Daniels' uh, work. Of course. And his, you know, he is he is C-3PO. He is 3PO. And, right. And uh, he created the, I mean, George created the character, but really, um, you know, his mannerisms, his animation, his, you know, quirkiness, his uh, voice, um, his, the way he interacts with R2, you know, you can tell when he's scared or, or excited or, Mm -hmm. uh, or insulted, you know, just by his, his mannerisms and the way that he acts and, um, I was really blessed at the beginning to uh, when I was a fan and had built this costume um, uh, to be able to um, I went to Dragon Con and uh, wore the costume for the first time in 2006 and it was chromed by then because I had just done the uh, Australia trip Mm -hmm. and uh, I had uh, Anthony Daniels was there and um, a a friend of mine uh, I, she was a volunteer at the event and I said, um, is there, is there any way I could, um, you know, get a, uh, meet, get to see Anthony again? Cause I had just seen him, uh, you know, last year and I wanted to see him again and see, so I could show him the chromed costume. Right. And she was like, oh yeah. So, um, 
he invited me up to his room, uh, me and um, uh, the, the person I was with, um, uh, Chris Lee, and he, uh, he, he invited me up to his room and, and to take a look at the costume, and he invited me in, and then he goes, uh, um, he gave me a tutorial on how to animate. Did you see this recently Dude. with uh, The Last Jedi where he did this? Yes, he this, taught the droid There's waiters. a video where, yes, exactly. That was what he did, just me and him and Chris Lee and, uh, in, in his hotel room. What? And he, he, he said, you know, you, you do, you know, the, the animation is each section of the body is separate. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, you move the, uh, the head separate from the body. You don't do wide, you know, motions. Anyway, all this stuff that could only come from the master. And, and that was, that was really, uh, real blessing to be able to add to this. Um, you know, uh, I mean, I, I had watched for hundreds of hours of him, yeah. you know, in, in everything he's been in, but to have him like, you know, explain how he does it is totally different than just watching it. But oh, yeah. anyway, Private lesson. uh, so yes, yes. Oh, I had one more story I want to tell you. Dude, lay it on me. Do you have a second? I have okay, a second. Okay. Um, there's another Anthony Daniels uh, story. Yes. When uh, we at, at um, Star Wars Weekends, mm -hmm. when we relaunched, uh, I told you when, when he and George and I were there uh, yeah. on the stage, and we were relaunching Star Tours. Yeah. Um, uh, he was also doing a – you have to watch this. It's on YouTube. Sweet. He was also doing a show, um, a live show with uh, a 30 minutes about his his life as C-3PO. Oh. And, spo spoiler alert, at the end, <laughs> uh, Anthony Daniels meets C-3PO uh, on stage for the first time. Ooh. Because he is C-3PO. He wouldn't ever meet C-3PO. Right. And so um, this was a, uh, a show that he, that Disney wrote um, mm -hmm. and that that he, um, you know, he wanted to, they, they wanted to have him do a show about, um, his work and then, uh, also to have this part at the end where he meets C-3PO. So if you look up Star Wars weekends, uh, Anthony Daniels meets C-3PO, um, you may be able to find it. Um, but so what, what happens is, uh, they had pitched the story to him and he said, no, I don't really want to do that because, you know, it's, it's special and want it to be special, and I totally get that. I totally respect that. Sure. Uh, you know, no, I no would not fault him for that anyway. But then when he read the script, um, he uh, agreed to do it because it was when you see it, it when you see this on YouTube, it's emotionally really touching uh, sure. when he. Because he voiced, he voiced, you know, himself obviously, but he also did the voice for C-3PO. So you hear his his voice both times, um, and uh, and he goes uh, behind. He he talks about his life, and then he explains what it's like to when he's going to go on set. So he uh, they had this screen, this this uh, backlit uh, white screen that he would go behind, and um, and so you would see his silhouette. Anthony Daniels, he said, I would go back and, and I would turn, I would become the golden man. So you see his silhouette, the light goes down and the light comes back up and it's C-3PO silhouette. Ooh. And so, um, and so then, uh, C-3PO comes out and then, um, uh, and C-3PO says, oh, hello, I am C. And then, and then Anthony Daniels comes out and goes, 3PO? And then <laughs> we're surprised. And uh, and we talk about you know you're you're really well known in this galaxy. Oh, well, you're really well known in this galaxy, which is funny because it's it's him doing both of them. But right. um, and and uh, but anyway, he talks. It, he a three PO goes on about um, you know it, it's hard for humans to understand machines, um, right. and that uh, you know how could Anthony Daniels, a human know what it's like to be a machine? And he's like, well, you know, I, I have some experience and, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so, um, it's, uh, it is a, I'll, I'll try and, uh, send you the link, but it cool. is by the end, um, you know, they, they become counterparts because they, they're finally meeting each other for the first time. 
um, and uh, and they have a they have a nice warm moment. And but then three people have to run away, uh, run off because uh, Star Tours requires his uh, assistance. <laughs> uh, and you know, uh, you wouldn't want me to be melted down now, would you? <laughs> and uh, so. Anyway, then I they have a rush off, but uh, you see the silhouette behind the screen, and then the light goes down, and then three people has gone. That's um, so cool. So, to now to do this, uh, we shot we, we we did this show six times, mm-hmm. and Anthony Daniels and I uh, did the rehearsals. You know, not in the cost I wasn't in the costume, mm-hmm. um, but it's just him and I on the stage doing this uh, this um, rehearsal, mm-hmm. and when when uh, we first got together to do this, he was very focused on the uh, <clears throat> show and, <laughs> under, and, and trying to re, you know, read it and understand it. So we didn't talk right. at all, um, even while we were doing the rehearsal. And I'm just being professional. I'm not, you know, even in, inside, I'm kind of freaking out a little bit. Sure. super excited. But, you know, I, I just, you know, just stood back and, you know, let him do his thing. And, and when it was my part, I would go up and do my part. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, so we did two shows like that and without talking or like, not even like introducing me or, or shaking my hand or anything like that. And, you know, I think, I don't know, I think he was just really focused on being, uh, you know, preparing for this and, and, uh, you know, maybe, but anyway, mm-hmm. so then uh, after the second show, he just goes without introduction or anything like that. He says, um, you know, again, we've met twice before, but he has met a lot of people, a lot of fans. Oh yes. Um, and so, yeah, I thought maybe maybe he didn't remember me, but um, anyway. So then, after the second show, he just goes, uh, he he, go, he comes up to me and goes, uh, "Hey, Chris, I, I want to work out uh, oh. some timing with you. I want to do. I want to make sure that I do something at the same time you do. That we do something at the same time, so we." We both look out of the audience when there's this joke, you know, uh-huh. and uh, and then I want to work out this other thing. And I was like, oh, yeah, sure. Great. But, you know, inside I was like, OK, we're working together now. That's right. <laughs> so, and and uh, so afterwards, um, his wife uh, was very sweet to me and t- told uh, told me how uh, uh, the job that I'd done was very um, was very good. And he he. Uh, wrote a little note to me and said, well done, Chris, and signed it, uh, Anthony Daniels, uh, which I, you know, treasure. Um, yeah, but, uh, and we've launched airplanes together and Disney shows and uh, museum openings. And anyway, um, and that's just the live stuff that we've done in person and together, but the rest of it is that he has done the voice and and I do the, um, the creature work. Yeah. And, uh, uh there's so much there's so much more i could talk about i i uh that would just take up too much time but um i i just i i really appreciate that you that we got together and we were able to talk about this stuff because it's it's something i love love doing dude absolutely i'm one of the uh multitudes of people that really enjoy the work that you do and it's pretty great that you're like <laughs> Thank you. you're anthony daniels like real life alter ego so well done <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks. It's amazing. Thank you. Amazing. I can't tell you yeah. how much I appreciate your Thank time, you man. So much. Truly. Oh yeah. Oh gosh, I, I appreciate it. Uh, I I loved, like I said, I loved that uh, that interview you did with details, um, and because it, it helped me get to know him a lot better. Um, we had been uh, uh, writing back and forth, but to be able to hear his voice and and. Uh, um, you know, hear his experiences, uh, you know, it's just a real treat. So thanks so much for the work that you do. Dude, thank you. That, I, that really means a lot. Uh, we are definitely having yeah. you back on, by the way. I mean, I don't know if, okay. I don't know okay. if you knew that, but, uh, it's like in the, oh, in the okay. unwritten contract, if you have a good time and don't oh. realize we've been talking right. for two hours, you kind of are morally yeah. obligated um, you know, I don't know if you knew uh, that. I'll, I'll come talk about anything. No, yeah, we so, can talk about. You, you can talk more next time, dude. Absolutely. Uh, where can people find you online? Um, I'm on Instagram at Chris F Bartlett. Sweet. Um, uh, uh, Chris F F is in Floyd. That's my middle name. That and is. um, and uh, Twitter, same thing. Chris F Bartlett. Um, what else? Uh, yeah, I mean that, that's pretty much all I. All I do right now, I, I don't. I'm not even on on Twitter that often. I just uh, Instagram. I think is my jam. So it's quick. Uh, it's simple. I, I find all I I can be in contact with all my friends on there. So that's what I use. 
Um, that's how I found you. That's how that's I right. got to hear Dee's uh, um, podcast. So um, that's really pretty much all I have time for. That works. Works um, perfectly. I love Instagram stuff. as well. Yeah. But this was great. You're okay. awesome. And oh, thanks. Thanks, man. You're awesome. Stop it. All right. Go well, on. let's let's get together <laughs> again soon. Yes, yeah. <laughs> let's get together again soon. For sure. And... Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you enjoyed it, stop by iTunes, give it a five-star rating. It really does help push the show to the front of the algorithm so that more people can find it. Uh, if you'd like to follow me, I'm on Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff, as Jedi Brian. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter. So until next time, be well. <laughs>